that's a part of the flex problem. You want to know why flex was going at me? It's because he was scared of his spot. Mm -hmm. He's scared of his spot because he's like, there's a nigga running so fast he's going to take my spot. But the problem is, is that flex goes, there's one spot. There shouldn't be. He's an icon. He should have graduated. But where does he graduate to? Why can't Noriega drop a new song? Why can't Snoop Dogg drop a new song? Why can't Jay-Z, Nas, Styles P, why can't they drop new songs? Because they don't want to be competing with these kids and putting out an album and be like, um, Sheik Luch does this amount. It's not fair. They're not even aiming for the same demographic. But in, in all fairness, you are right. I love this. I love this. But we are seeing people like Killer Mike have like be in positions where you can win you're Killer older. Mike won at the Grammys Killer Mike did not win to the masses his records are nowhere the people are not playing it they're not in the club they're not getting embraced by the younger demographic Killer Mike's record got highlighted by the music curators of what the Grammy board is Yo, this video is sponsored by Los Hermanos, and it's crazy because I always wanted to have a uh, tequila sponsorship. So shout out to my guys over at Los Hermanos for taking a shot with me, doing this partnership thing. I really appreciate it. Listen, I like it so much, I might just be worse than uh, Rick Ross, bro. So if you see me on the gram posting it all over my story and my gram, don't say nothing. Just go ahead and buy a bottle. I got it by the case. So look, we got the Blanco. We also got the Repo. And you know, my favorite is in Yeho, right? We got it on the way. You know, like I said, we got it by the case, man. So listen, if you in Delaware, you in Georgia, you in Maryland, you in New York, you in Jersey, make sure you go to the nearest liquor store and ask for some Los Hermanos. Hey, my guys. I never understood the blood and crip affiliation in New York. Like, because it's heavy. Because what? It's heavy. Heavy? In New York. I just never, yeah. I never understood how. From what way? I just always thought it was a West Coast thing, like an LA thing. I mean, in its in its like origination, yeah. but you know, at the end of the day, when l let's be authentic with it, right? Most people who are turning in the gang mm -hmm. is kids. You get yeah. what I mean? They're kids. So we're not talking about an overwhelming amount of research, <laughs> you know, before joining something. Mm -hmm. They're like, "This is what my friends are doing. So this is what I'm doing." So that's just kind of what it is. Your neighborhood and your block are kind of define your gang. And at that point, it was really kind of straightforward. It was just crip on one side of the town, blood on the other. I feel like it was it's real heavy. Like, because even in Baltimore, we had a moment mm -hmm. where it was like heavy power rule, heavy Hoovers. Like, what years? It had to be like maybe if I graduated high school in 2010, it had to be like. Before I went to high school, like, 06, 07, maybe. Yeah, so it was in New York before that. It was in the 90s. Mm. You know, I mean, the whole... It's probably... Let me not say that, because it probably was there before, but I'm saying from my remembering, like, heavy, it was definitely, like, 07. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you know, Crip mostly in, in New York is, like, 96, 97, mm. and Blood started in 1993 in New York, realistically. That's nine tray. Damn. You know? That's crazy. So, like, that's kind of just what it is. So there's a surge into... Like, I remember being a kid, and then everybody being like, don't go outside. The, the bloods are going to cut you. The Crips is going to cut you. It was just, like, ridiculousness. And this is, my mother is from the Caribbean. She's a West Indian mom. Mm. So you talking about paranoia. She's like, go outside. They're going to kidnap you. Oh, shit. Oh, God. They're going to kill my son. Mm. You know? And then I didn't have a pops. My pops was just inconsistent, one of those little piece of shits. You know what I mean? And, and um. So I just had a very heavily nervous mother. Mm. You get what I'm saying? I was like, I don't want you in none of this. How do I keep you around it? And it's it's impossible. Once you go outside, the, the, the gang is just what it is. Mm. And even if you aren't gang, you are gang because your friends are okay. Yeah. There's someone going like, I bet you're going to get hit. You're going to get hit. Not you, you're going to get hit. It's like, nah. okay, you are one. And that's just kind of what it becomes. That's how it was for me, like coming in Baltimore. Like I never... I always say this, like I wasn't like a street nigga, mm -hmm. but like just coming up in them environments in general, you going, you got, you adopt some of those those ways yeah. from from the street. If you are, if you if you're a street nigga or not, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. that just is what it is. Yeah. Like so, I definitely get it. Yeah. And even like when when me, my situation was like probably a little different because my mom's is older. Like my mom's seventy five now. 
So like when I was, I was young, older than your mom. Word? Yeah, my mom's 78, 9. So like you probably understand. So like around yeah. that time, she wasn't like around that time when I was a kid, like parents was fighting kids with them, with their with their oh. kids. Like my mom was never into none of that. She's yeah. like, don't worry about it, son. Pray God got you. Like, I'm like, bro, I'm trying to get back. I'm trying to get my hit my lick back. Like, you talking about some pray. Like, these niggas is out for blood. Well, you your background Caribbean? No. No, nah, no. Nah, my mom just oh, what I found out is I feel like the older African American culture and Caribbean ca- culture is closer than like the younger generation, if that makes sense. Got it. Like, cause a lot of things are similar. Yeah. Like even with our shorty, whatever. Yeah. I feel like the way her moms would say things will remind me of what my mom would say. Yeah, mine mine was super. That Caribbean, it's fear, bro. My mm. mother was scared out of her life to just be kind of what it is. America used to scare the hell out of her. And then you're an old lady, so what do you do? You stare at the news. Yeah. And then at that point, it wasn't really, there's no, she's not on social media. Yeah. We're still on AOL. Here's 20 free hours if you use the disc. Nice. So she's looking at the news. Kid gets stabbed. Kid gets robbed. Kid gets this. For your Jordans. And what do I beg for? Jordans, phone posits. They're like, they're going to kill you for these. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it just was like that. But um, yeah, man, it just, it was just, mm. yeah. That's crazy. It just kind of just became what it was, man. You ready to get this thing started? I'm already rolling. Let's get it popping, man. What's popping? You know what time it is. Your boy, Mr. J Hill. J Hill Podcast. We in the building. Uh, I am actually recording at the Pro Creative Studio right now. So make sure you holler at my guy, you know. Shout out to the black man, Los Hermanos, you know, New Jersey, New York, Georgia, uh, shit, Delaware, um, Washington, D.C. If you're in any one of those areas, you can go to a liquor store. They got it. You want to try some? What's that one? That's the rep? This rep Rosado. Want some? I'd try the rep. Punches in the building, guys. Yeah, there it is. Listen. Punches here. I'm ex- there's this show. Yes, this sir. is so many years coming. It's a lot. J-Hill, I gotta start like this. Before I let you go, I'm gonna start with an apology. Oh man. I'm gonna start with an apology. This man right here has literally reached out to me years ago and was like, Punch, I see what you're doing, bro, bro, bro. And I was like, I got you, I got you, I got you. And I just yesed him. I wasn't in my, my zone at that point. But you have been so A1, I am. I, I don't mean it on no brig bro shit, mm. but I am proud of where you've come and gotten this brand and gotten everything. Now you got sponsors, you got a bunch of cool things going on. But this is amazing, bro. At the end of the day, I apologize for taking so long. Mm. Now I owe you a couple of favors. I'm going to do the family pop-ins <laughs> on the good episodes. You get what I'm saying? I got a couple dollars. I fly more. You see on the flight. You get what I mean? Like, we doing well. Put the logo in front. Let them shine. My dog, I appreciate yeah. you, bro. Now, it's funny that you say that because like I always talk about consistency. And like I'm at a point now... And I know you're going to say some shit, but I'm at a point now where I'm kind of slowing down f- from the the persistence, not consistence. I'm consistent, but like the persistently contacting people over and over again. I'm like, I let them do what they want to do. You know what I'm saying? But like, man, the fact that you said that shows, I be telling people all the time, like, bro, I've been doing this for a minute. I've been just hitting nigga. I'll hit you a hundred times. Yeah. He hit me multiple times. Like literally. When I looked at the DM, I was ashamed. Like, damn, I did my bro bad. It is what it is, bro. We here right now, though. I actually want to, um, you got a lot of history, bro. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, ice is all cool. Why not? I um oh, on this one. You the man. Thank you, brother. I uh a toast one time before we started. Are you drinking it? Uh, there it is. A little. Oh yeah, my man is on health as well. My bad. Uh, health but, as well. Tell me, tell me your honest opinion. What you think? It's tequila. So I like that chest on fire real quick. For real? Of course. I thought it would be smoother. I'm not mad. I'm a vodka guy. I just took it off the strength. I see it. No, nah, in fact, yeah. that's why I tell people all the time. You could be honest. Like, he paid me to put it here. Yeah. And he don't pay me to persuade you to, to tell people it's good. I don't get mad at anything. I look at it like realistically, I only like vodka. Really? Everything else is liquor. That's how I feel. That's crazy. At this exact point. That's different. Yeah. Because usually it'll be like, I like a tequila. Everybody, I think, is trendy. Like, let, let's be real. The world, if you ask the black community, what's your favorite drink? And they drink cognac, they're going to say Hennessy. Like, a lot of people are very. This is what was in front of me. Right. People didn't try a lot. You get what I mean? I've been around the world a couple times. I've been able to do some cool things. Mm. I've been What's out your favorite of, vodka? Favorite vodka? I'm a simple man, bro. Grey Goose. I even like pineapple flavored. I'm a simple man. A lot of people like Grey Goose. Yeah. It's not trendy. I also I, I also like, you know, pineapple Ciroc. I don't know if Ciroc is canceled or not, but... Shout out Diageo. If it's not, <laughs> you funny. Welcome, you know, that's a smart man. You know, I love. Shout Diageo. out Diageo. Is yeah, we're going great. above it. It's bigger than Ciroc. It's Diageo. <laughs> you know, I love it. You know, yeah. shout you out. Facts. Now, I, um, I think when I do get back to drinking, I might only drink vodka because I, it's like no calories. 
type vibe. Well, see, you want health as wealth. I'm just talking about like a little bit of taste. Oh, see, I'm just yeah, like because I, I heard. I need to get like you, bro. I want calories? to. I've been, I've been, I've lost a lot of weight though. Really? How much? How many? Twenty six pounds in five weeks. That's not bad. Yeah, I, I play. I run. I run full courts. Um, every day. That shit gets you right though. In my backyard. Wait, by yourself though? Or yeah, was I do your drills. Home? I do drills. I, I came up playing basketball, so I do drills, full court drills all the time. Damn. But I got a, a NBA regulation backyard. NBA regulation basketball court in my back. I heard the crib is crazy. The crib is unbelievable. I invite you for mm. for 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 the the calm days or the fuckery, whichever you'd like to be a part of. Because trust me, there are both. I could come to the fuckery. Right yeah, you now. can't listen. <laughs> my birthday party was at a very 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 insane thing. Mm. My car, I might have had maybe about 150 at my birthday party. All people I knew, uh, maybe bad. four or five, maybe four or five. Um, Four or five strippers. Maybe. When was your birthday? Uh, Labor Day weekend. Maybe ten porn stars in there. This is a fact, though. Like it's he a was real working thing. with a lot of. Sh- I was porn a cool thing. We'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, uh, yeah, bro, I seen you. My Adam, media traded. I seen you, Adam. In a few interview, bro. I'm just saying. I I seen it. I, know I live you. a cool life. I live the life that a lot of men will want to live. Before, all right. Before I live we, my truth. Before we get into that, yeah, we'll get me there. personally, you know, I came up watching you in this space that I'm in. Mm-hmm. So like yeah we can we gonna talk about the six nines the uh, young and maze the you tied to a lot bro yeah. the pop smokes God rest his soul yeah Casano like bro you we know yeah. you locked in me personally though yeah I want to start at media yeah and um, before I ask a question I just want to comment on something I noticed you were doing a lot of content mm-hmm. for this is fifty. Mm-hmm. But you wasn't selfish. And what I mean by that is, like, nowadays you see us try to do the independent thing, mm-hmm. right? Like, if I'm if I'm going to work with a radio station, like, you're going to know it's about me. Mm-hmm. One thing that I, I just paid attention to, I'm like, yo, he always kept it. This is 50, mm-hmm. but it still was you. Like, the video, this is 50 brand and everything. But in the title, it might say, um, I don't know, a 6 9 interview with Punch. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But on the brand, it's... Is this is 50, and that's important. And I was just telling one of my friends that he works in Radio 1, yeah. right? I'm like, bro, don't take my route. I wouldn't suggest this. Yeah. You in the building, yeah. I know you want, they not helping you. You want to make everything about you. I know that, bro. It, it's not fair. You get these interviews by yourself. It's not <laughs> fair. But, bro, just put them on the mat. Yeah. It's going to help in the long run. And I'm wondering from somebody who I've seen do it, yeah. and you could correct me at any time, what was your thought process when you was doing that? So, I, I I humbly say that I'm one of like the starting guys like that, like one of the original podcasters, you know, hip hop that that especially for my generation. And I know everybody gets nervous to say certain claims out of fear someone's going to jump out the window, but I'm definitely one of the first for it, you know. And what happened was all hail to Heineken, Jeremy Bettis, um, who basically was like, yo, bro, you're a star. Heineken is, you know, it's my brother from, you know, he's been up at G-Unit for a long time, many years before Dutch and Heineken shot to them. And it was just like, yo, bro, you got to come up here. And I went up there and um, I had met someone else from F and Vodka at the same exact time where they were like, yo, you got to meet 50. And I'm literally like, yo, that's two people that's like, I got to meet 50. Hmm. Who can make it happen? Because you don't got to convince me to meet 50 Cent. Right. By this point, I was already somebody in the ground level of music we've already had where people were like yo we got the i'm working young ma at this time this is early it's before hit record uh we probably just put out a a mixtape that i hosted designer already well no designer didn't come yet and then a lot of people was like yo the gs9 thing coming out of brooklyn flatbush canarsie this is like a real thing Hmm. where people was like yo look at what's happening so there's a lot of attention on... This is before This Is 50. Yeah, this is before. This Is 50 comes 2015 fall. And then they they, they basically, they, they pull me up. I was like, do a test run. I do a test run. I smoke it. I smoke it. I did almost like 4 million views in the first three months before I was even officially on the channel. Mm. And um, they basically was like, yo, listen, we're making this whole new room. It's getting painted. You're about to be the first one on this. We want you to have your own show as well. And, um, you know, I remember when Heineken was there, Heineken was like, man, do whatever you want to do. So all grace and big shout out to Heineken and never, because he could have been like, I was here first and try to confine it. He was like, man, do whatever you got to do. Mm. You know, because we were in a group show originally kind of testing it out. You know what I mean? Um, and 
the first interview of the year was with designer. And it just, it I literally was at, I started doing, there was a point where I was doing almost probably three quarters of a million to a million and a half a week, mm. view wise. Yo, this is, uh, so yeah. I'm still, this is specifically <laughs> for the young guys that might be in a space in a corporate setting or might be coming up behind somebody they ain't getting the shine that they want, right? Yeah. Again, as far as the branding for This Is 50, were they paying you? Were they helping you get the guests? Why were you going so hard for This Is 50 but as well as for yourself? Like, How did you see in your mind that you could make both of it happen? So so I, I guess, you know, and I, thank you for rerouting the question because it's like when they gave me the opportunity to literally be like, all right, cool, you got this. I didn't, I always, it was a conscious effort for me to not to look like I'm doing too much. I'm a loud person. I'm six for six. I'm 300 pounds. I'm in a room. You're going to feel my presence. Mm. And when you come up from the bottom, you had aggressive tendencies and shit like that. So I never wanted to feel like I was overbearing the channel. But I knew that the channel was arguably was dying for a while. Mm. It was dying. Like Jack Thriller been gone. The channel was going down. Heineken was there, but he didn't really have much help. You get what I mean? I, hopefully people don't get weird and emotional about it. But authentically, how about this? The facts of the stats were showing the decline before anybody gets emotional. You get what I mean? And mm -hmm. feel like they were there and it didn't. But when it was going down, it was like, yo, there was a new face. And what I also represent outside of new face was just new energy. So instead of being like, I got this new face and new energy, let me make this the punch show. I was okay with being like, let's let's get this. This is 50 shit hot. Mm -hmm. And when they gave me the new room, it was like a fresh start. So I didn't feel like I needed to make it about me. Mm. I was like, let's go. So the first couple months on everything, let me tell you some real shit. I had a, I invested in a camera that was better than the camera that was in This Is 50. Mm. So I probably had spent, and the grace, and this is, uh, this is again, 2016. I might have spent maybe 48, maybe $4,900, maybe 5K, all in on the SLR and lenses and everything, and literally was bringing my own camera up there. And I was outsourcing my own edits because 50 wasn't prioritized and this is 50 at that point. Mm. So the channel was suffering. They were behind on interviews. And when I got there, they were pumping. So that's another thing I, I raised up. I tripled, quadrupled the speed of the output because mm. I was like, I got to make this thing work. Because I also knew that while this was going on, that there was money going to come from the F inside because I was a DJ. Mm. And Puff had came up with the genius... Um, uh, Ciroc Boys and Effin that came up with Effin Mob mm. and I wanted to be Effin Mob badly because I was like yo let's just do this 50 let's get this rocking and then when Effin started to come and give product and get everything and now we in the club and it's Effin everywhere I knew that that was going to also just raise that temperature as well how old were you at that time in 2016 shit. 2015 I don't know oh shit 23 4 something like that I think so you because it sounds like you already had the business mind yeah you might have even made a few mistakes before you got there. Because I'm thinking, like, you don't just learn that Yeah. at This Is 50. Like, you had to learn that to come in the building and be like, I can't make the same mistakes. That's nah, what I'm thinking. Not really. I was really, uh, yo, bro, it's, it's a blessing from God. I didn't make too many. You know how people are like, I made mad mistakes. I really didn't. Um, I, I understood really fast. It was like, yo, the problem with this is that they can't get the content out. Let's get a MacBook. Let's get, because I was making money as a DJ. That's another helpful thing. Money was coming in. Okay. You get what I mean? By that point, though, I wasn't big money. I might have been a three, four hundred dollar DJ. You get what I'm saying? Maybe five hundred at that point. Um, you know, like a, a, a booking rather. But I could clear twenty five hundred in a week. Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? And for me, then it's a lot of money. That's you know, what I mean, twenty five hundred in a week. I'm, I'm at ten thousand a month. But that's good because even then, like I'm, again, I'm talking to the so specifically for for the audience, right? Mm -hmm. Let me reel, reel this back. A lot of times, like my peers look at me. And they want to go my route, mm -hmm. independent, mm -hmm. right? Right, and that's cool. Don't get me wrong, but I I tell I'm specifically talking one friend, right? Shout out to my guy. I, I be like, don't go that route because I didn't just walk in this lane and said I want to be this independent. I didn't do yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> I was forced here yeah. because of the decisions I made. Yeah, and but when I was in those rooms, I did work for radio. I never really championed the station, and that's why I kind of always got in trouble. I always like this Jay Hill thing. I'm, I'm gonna make this work for Jay Hill. And I was just telling my friend, like, nah, don't do that. Do the opposite. And when I looked at Chip, I was doing my research, and I'm like, yo, this is it. Like, I literally look, I'm like, bro, this is, I can't put it no no better. So when you say you was a DJ making $500, you could clear 25 in a week, that's a pretty good DJ. And oh, again, yeah. I'm thinking about back home, it's like yeah. niggas that's one specific DJ that's really like that. But again, when I see, 
I can't really see them in under an umbrella of no station or yeah. no company. Yeah. And although that's dope for our, us as peers, right? I'm asking you for somebody that kind of took another approach. Mm -hmm. How beneficial was that? And how was you able to do that? Being already have a name, like because making twenty five hundred in a week, that's you, I was, you I was up somebody. Probably, I was probably a top ten DJ not on radio at that point in New York, but we was also in New York, so it's an extremely saturated market. I was a very popular person in my city, okay. So I couldn't bring out a hundred people, you know, to a party. You know, a lot of people they got to understand dollar for dollar. There's so much layers to this, but let's break it down. If we're gonna break it down, let's break it down. If you could bring a hundred people in a venue, and they do a a, a thirty dollar head top just on that, you're talking about. Like you just brought in three thousand mm -hmm. dollars because your name is on a flyer. Just a hundred people. You get what I mean? So now you go if you now go and you literally go. I right, bet I'm gonna bring out fifty girls and then they're gonna sprinkle in their guys and we doing thirty ahead. Now we talking about I'm responsible for three thousand. I really was always thinking like I was still getting paid too little. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Because you put my name on a flyer, bring out a hundred people. Now the venues in New York started to shrink. The larger venues they stopped giving it to black people. You know what I mean? It's just too much rap shit, shootings, robberies. Guns, everything negative that you could imagine. But because I was able to financially survive, I was also I also gave the game something that it was not normal at that time, which just looked like a nigga that had some money. I had a chain, I had bracelet, I had certain things at that point that made it look like he's doing something. So I looked cool. Mm. Like that's a part of it. I looked like a baby rapper that was talking to people. Then when you get rappers that started to come in slowly, again, I didn't need to be too much because they'd be like, yo, we going out. You was in the club with me last night. Yo, my, 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 my radio promoter brought me to the club and you was DJing. I'm like, come to this is 50. So I started to get these authentic ground level relationships that made me not have to overcompensate for who I was. I was okay. Also, this is 50 is a representation of Curtis Jackson mm. who was one of the people that I looked up to coming up. It's not like I was working for the tree brand. I worked for 50 Cent. Mm. So that also was a pride thing to be like, I work with 50. You get what I mean? Like, I can talk to 50 Cent. And that was early. By literally, by week one of them giving me my own platform, I was directly contacting 50 Cent from that point forward. So 50 and me had a direct communication. So argue me this. Not, my life. Not, not, not intensely, but just for the sake of the audience. Because I understand what you're saying. But... I'm a DJ. I'm bringing 100 people. Bro, like, I could do this shit myself. Why would I go on This Is 50 and do these interviews? Y'all not paying me. I'm kicking out my money. I'm, wait, like, I could do this myself. That's what I would think. Yeah. If I'm I'm lit. Mm -hmm. Why would, why shouldn't I think that? Just, there's no rush. I was in such a, I did, I did three months test run, whatever you want to call it, my, my tryout run, whatever you want to say. I did millions so now they gave me this room and they're like, yo, you're about to have this room for a while before we move over the other show in here. And then we get this. So you're going to run for a while almost solo. That was really, they're giving me a lot of the things. Not everything was dollar amount. I would be chasing dollar amount if I wasn't making money. Mm. But because I had money, that allowed me to be in a position to where I wasn't starving. Mm. And you make very unhealthy decisions when you're starving. Thanks. Very unhealthy decisions. You go to the, don't go to the grocery if you're hungry. You get what I'm saying? It's a very, very, you're going to end up picking up a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. You know what I mean? They always tell you these things. You know what I mean? That's just it. Don't go to the strip club and ain't fucking a couple weeks. You're going to blow the bag. Mm. The girl look you in the eye, you might be convinced she actually like you. You get what I'm saying? So my whole point of the matter is that because of the DJing, I was able to make enough bread to survive. Now, I wasn't making $2,500 a week, but there were weeks where yeah. I did. And when those moments came, I'm a very aggressive spender. And I'm very, very. I, I don't. I don't. I don't do drugs. No pills. No weed. I really wasn't a big liquor drinker. Um, I wasn't big in a strip club. I didn't really do European clothes. So there was no Louis Gucci Fendi. So I wasn't blowing bag. But I still was what I would consider like a fly put together nigga. A lot of those things also. And I know it's gonna sound like a barrage of shit. But what's really, really key for me too was that. And I don't want to make it sound terrible, but I used to get a lot of a lot of girls. Like, so when we come, with confidence, though. Yeah, 100%. I used mm -hmm. to have a lot of girls, like way more than a normal guy. Mm -hmm. So with this comes, it never made me feel like I got to misbehave or overcompensate to get women. Mm -hmm. So because bitch, it, it just becomes the wave. It becomes this to where like niggas like, yeah, I'm a Louis Gucci it up. Yeah, I'm going to go crazy. Yo, you know what? We're going to get that bust down next. They're chasing the batter girl. By this point, I might have had a couple. 
I might have I might have had a couple Instagram girls by this point. You know what I mean? Like that's just being real. Which at that point was peak, like this is twenty fifteen. The goal that was of the, to yeah. attain it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Have a girl on love and hip hop. When you get to that point, you're like, oh shit, you're lit. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because that's really a lot of people will jump in and out and hold that this is fifty as the marker. But a lot of men pursue wealth just for access to women. Mm-hmm. You literally will get niggas who are. Millions, millions, and millions to do what? Get a yacht, right? Just to you want to go on a yacht with the bros? You want to get some hoes? The second that they get the yacht, let's get some bitches, man. Facts, yeah. If a nigga go, yo, bro, he got the penthouse suite. You think he called the dogs? No. <laughs> he like, yo, the dogs is here. Go get the bitches. Yeah, facts. Bring them back. Yeah. Everybody's chasing women. Now, what if you can circumvent that? Mm. You save money. You facts. save effort. Mm-hmm. I've been a cool kid. I've been super, super in tune. I was fucking with girls from an extremely young age, so I was already more and more advanced. I was just on it. Now, there's going to be guys out there that's going to hate, but this is just really my timeline. I've also been a cool nigga my entire life. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like, in high school, I'm a basketball player. I'm a ranked basketball player in the city, in the state. Then you go, you played, played with, a, I played with the Bronze Gauchos, national champions. Like, you get like that. Then you go to college, I battle rapped. I did the whole shit. I've been lit my entire life. Of course, in subjectivity to my environments. Mm. I wasn't famous when I was 10. I wasn't LeBron. I wasn't Lenny Cook. I wasn't Carmelo. But I was lit. You get what I'm saying? To be able to be like one of those guys. Mm. And that comes with access to women. So when I got older, it wasn't losing my mind. Like, we got to get... <laughs> it's like that demeanor was already there. Then that access changes it. So when it comes back down to it, when you in those environments... I'm able to take all of every dollar I got and invest back into myself and be like, let's do more shit versus, you know what, I got to take this bitch out. We got to go see. You know see, what I mean? I'm stuck on a 50 because the, 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 the girl thing is is for sure. I understand that. Mm-hmm. I'm stuck on a career-wise because, again, it just, it's, it's genius. It's a genius play that so many of us uh, are not, I think, that overlooked because even the guy that's getting money, I'm not doing that for somebody else when I can do it for myself. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing that stand, that stood out to me, right? Because like, I'm getting money. I'm lit. I Like, why build up? This is 50. Okay, build up me. And the fact that you, like, again, you made it work. And now coming on the flip side, I'm hearing you say, like, you had a lot of licenses. And I'm wondering, was you able to keep that revenue as well from that YouTube? N- not, not so early, but eventually, yes. Yes, yeah, so I own a lot of the content. Majority of the content is mine. That's and that's crazy because you said something about um, I got time. Yeah, but I just don't see, that. I don't see you saying it at twenty three. No, it's very. It, it's because I was moving in the DJ world. It's a lot. I'm not as yo. I promise you, a lot of things is when niggas are just scattered mm-hmm. and they're like, "Yo, bro, I gotta get it. I gotta get it." That's nervous. Mm. If a bad bitch come to the crib. And she there, and you'd be like, what's up, baby? Here, have a drink, relax yourself, look at some TV. And you spin off and hit the other room for a second. She's almost like, well, shit, man, this is lit. Mm-hmm. Okay. You go, and you never had a bad thing in your life. And you next to what's up, baby? You good? Oh, my God, you know you bad, you beautiful little mm-hmm. thing. You on a body. She start to go, nigga, you are on me. She feel like she on full court pressure. Facts. Now, I didn't do it to be cool. It became my nature to allow things to blossom when they do. Mm. I'm ready for it, and I'm not lagging. This isn't like I just let everything. It's all in God's plan. None of that. But I was not desperate. Mm. You get what I'm saying? I'm going to hit before they leave. That's some New you York shit. You I'm going be. to. It got to be a New York thing. Because, like, again, like, even when you, uh, bro, I'm 33 now. Yeah. You j- I just got to the space where you was like, how you feeling? I'm like, bro, like, I mean that. It's like, yeah. whatever, bro. But it was years of me, like, and, again, I don't know if this is helping or hurting. I'm not really texting nobody 100 times no more. Yeah. I was doing that if, because I was I was eager. I was hungry. People liked it. Some people didn't. But it was, was like. living in Baltimore. Yeah. That could be it. It's not about a New York thing. It's it's not a, being a New York thing, but I'm in New York. So my access points are much more. Okay. So you are also in a market that didn't have access like that. Mm. Y'all didn't have, y'all might have had a handful of lit rappers yeah. over the last decade. You and get what I'm saying? It was just lit in the city. Yeah, and that's it. You get what I'm saying? So y'all didn't have a lot of resources. You definitely didn't have media outlets. Right. There's no label in your city. You get what I'm saying? Who's the big rapper coming in and, and pouring in? I'm in New York where I can literally go, fuck Queens, fuck the Bronx, fuck Harlem. 
if we just focus on Brooklyn rap, we're yeah. legendary. <laughs> yeah. And Queens niggas can say, fuck Brooklyn. Yeah. Look at our legendary legacy and the Bronx and Harlem as well. We are so jam-packed of legacies that I'm from Brooklyn. You get what I'm saying? I'm mm. from this era where I'm like, we can literally just totally insulate with ourselves. Okay. You get what I'm saying? To where that I, again, a level of we're good is there. Like, it's okay. You get what I mean? I had a high level of confidence. Like, one important thing that it's not out there a lot, so I'll pull back to a, a story I don't even know if you knew. When I first started to host parties, before I started DJing, I was hosting a party, and I was on the microphone, and I ripped my vocal cords. Mm. I, it's, 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 a, it's painless. You, you don't notice that it happened. My vocal cords were so abused. I'm taking shots. I'm yelling on the microphone. Smoke There's everywhere. smoke everywhere. It's dry. I'm yelling. I'm not sleeping. I'm not drinking enough water. We're doing soda. It's everything horrific for your voice. I didn't know what was going on. I couldn't speak a word, Not a nothing more than that, for four months. Doctors didn't know what was going on. They considered it cosmetic surgery because they didn't. There was no reason why I needed my voice and I had bullshit um, health insurance. It took me 14 months to get my voice back. In that time period, I'm looking at a movie one day and um, ain't nobody love me, love me man. man. And I'm like, oh, this is Patti LaBelle. Anita Baker is one of them. It's lit. I'm going to Google it. Google, boop, boop, boop. Shaka Khan. I've heard of her. Mm. Wow, this is crazy. My mom was a Caribbean lady. She's not playing soul. She was playing Calypso. It's a whole different mm -hmm. Calypso and Soka. You get what I'm saying? So I'm literally like, oh shit, okay, cool. Google it. Boop, boop. I look Shaka Khan, doodle -doo fire. Okay, cool. What's this? Oh shit, Kanye. Wow, there's probably a bunch of these. She has a song, Lionel Richie. Google Lionel Richie. Boop. Download his album. Push come to shove. My OCD downloading, putting things in order. I'm naming it right. Shaka Khan dash, greatest hits dash. Through the wire, 1970, whatever it is. I'm just, you know what I mean? And I'm, we're indexing this music so much. When I get my voice back in 14 months and I want to come back, I go to my friends and I'm like, yo, bro, I want to DJ. They're looking at me like, nigga, you wanted to rap, you wanted to promote, you wanted to host, you want to do too much, bro, we're not jacking it. And my friends from Brooklyn was not jacking me. My friends from Long Island, they wasn't jacking me. Nobody was jacking me. I went to Manhattan and I was going door to door at these local bars, these restaurants, lounges. I will DJ the entire night. Whatever y'all want me to do, I will DJ. I'm literally going to do anything y'all want. I go, I start DJing. My fourth or fifth event, um... A publicist who said that she worked for Carmelo Anthony was in it. Well, I didn't know this yet. A girl was in a party and was like, it's my homegirl's birthday. So they're dancing. They go crazy. They 30th. I do the math in the party. 30th. Okay, cool. Minus 16. I guess it's at 14. It's going to sound like I'm bugging, but I'm being honest. I had my music in such a detailed order that I could type in the year and only will pull up the year of that library. Mm. And I've been thought this theory was like the most influential music to every single person in this planet is the music you listen to in high school. Elementary, you listen to whatever you hear. Junior high school, you listen to what they tell you. In high school, you get to choose. Mm. That's why we all memorize all of the music from high school. Ask anybody to rap a verse from high school, they will rap it. I ask you to go rap the newest Drake or Kendrick, you will have a very hard problem. Even though you heard it 10 times, your mind will not save it. But in high school, you memorized all of those verses. Now, so when I'm there, I'm like, let me take it to high school. Let me take you back to freshman year, Jess. Boop. And they're like, Ron, I had him. So I just stayed in that pocket the whole time. Hold on. What about that next year? I remember when you had that boy in your crush and he was on your body. Boop. And now they're like, this is the greatest. It connected to them so much. They're like, you're the greatest DJ we ever heard. She was like, I'm a publicist for, you know what I mean? I work with Carmelo Anthony. I work for the NBA. I want you to come do my draft party. I said, okay. I do the draft party. Now the day that I'm supposed to have a draft party, a headline DJ misses his flight and the opening DJ got into a car accident. I'm on all night. It's lit. And I literally go from, now this is my fifth gig, most, but my music is in such an immaculate order. I just started at the oldest and just went through whole way and I just played the calendar. Mm. I was in funk, disco, soul, like, let's vibe. What you know about this? And I'm going in there and I'm building it up. Hold on, we don't go New Jack Swing. And I'm in there, new edition, Bobby Brown. I'm going crazy. Just got paid, Johnny Kemp. It's insane. But it's bringing people on a ride that they're like, I never heard a party like this. And I'm just holding on for dear life. Mm. I'm like, man, I never DJed for more than probably two hours. I'm DJing for five right now. I'm nervous. But they're rocking. Mm. That whole day, she goes, she starts plugging me into arenas. I start DJing at the Garden, the Barclay. I start doing NBA events, Nike events. That's how I started my Nike relationship that I later had. And I got all of these relationships. I say all of that to go that I knew the whole time 
that I am skipping steps, which is why, again, I never wanted to be like DJ Punch because I was like, yo, I'm skipping a lot of steps. Like, I've been DJing for eight months and I DJed in Madison Square Garden. My friends have been DJing for eight years and they not even they not even out of Queens yet. They can't even get a headline in Manhattan. So I always had a very delicate respect for what the DJ, you know, prefix was. And I never wanted to just throw it. I put all of that to say these things added an ab normal amount of confidence in how I was moving because I'm like, man, I cracked through this DJ scene in three years mm. and I'm literally a top 10 DJ right now. Whether people believed it or not, my booking rate was showing a very different story mm. because when you can bring out these people and these relationships, it changes. I knew unbelievable amount of girls. I knew a lot of people. I'm bringing them out and I'm in Manhattan now because I skipped the steps of going through Queens and Brooklyn to build up. I'm already in Manhattan because I they seen what I'm doing. I skipped again. I circumvented it the same way that guys go to get the money to the cars, to the yacht, to the thing to get the bitches. Mm -hmm. And I said, whoop. I ended up circumventing it again. Not even being on purpose. It's just like, what is the goal? I think a lot of people just see the maze of life wrong. They go about it the wrong way. They're chasing, what do you want? And ask yourself, and I always say, ask yourself that second why. You know, like, yo, you want to, you, yo, you want this girl? Why? Because she's bad. But why? Mm. When you get to that second why is when you're going to get your real answer. It's like, yo, bro, I'm going to be real because I never had a bad bitch. Got it. <laughs> it's not that you want this girl. It's because you never had a bad one. No problem. So when you get there, I'm going to give you the advice on how to deal with the bad bitch, not, not just, just to her. get the girl. Oh, come on. Because they're not, they missing the, they missing the plays. So wait, let me ask you, hold up, hold up, hold up. You was giving game because like the host and shit, that's what I used to do like before I even got into radio. Mm -hmm. When you got to This Is 50, mm -hmm. are you still relatively new in your career? In DJing? Yeah. Or just in that At space? 15, I start DJing in 12. So, so I'm no. three years in. But I'm in three years competing against people that's been DJing since high school. There's people that's, my peers are 10 years in. I ask that because I feel like sometimes the experience is what messes up the opportunities because it's mm -hmm. certain things that I wouldn't do now because I just know better. But when I was younger, it was nothing I wasn't going to do. Uh -uh. But those are the things that gave me opp other opportunities yeah. because it's like, bet, I get a, a, a job for what they say, the exposure, right? And then that exposure really get me a bag. Whereas though now, yeah. It's gonna be hard for me to do a job for the exposure. Got to be a hell of a lot more now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So like that's why I was wondering. I was wondering if if maybe you were still that hungry because you still was like new or yeah. you felt like you was new. Um, I just I think I just I just one thing about me, bro, is that I understand life. I understand life. Like later in my life, as we get to it, I turned. I was a life coach for like a year and a half. Mm. Like I understand life better than my peers, better than almost anybody I know. I understand life. You know, people like I'm always learning. I'm always learning. Yeah, I'm always learning. But I have a way better grip of life than most people. Mm. I understand life. I understand male behavior, female behavior, understand. And it's also because I had such a dynamic upbringing. I grew up around gang. Then I played basketball. So I grew up around athletes. Then I went to college. I got kicked out of college for inciting a riot. Mm. I was a dickhead. I want to run around flag on campus and bully niggas and then I'm get kicking out of college. I go back home. I start chilling with Spanish drug dealer niggas from the south side of Brooklyn. You know what I mean? I start doing that. I go around. I'm around executives and interns. I've been around such a dynamic like journey of people. And I mean, I was really, I was really, really, really um into these relationships when I was around these guys. You get what I mean? I really learned what was happening. Mm. So I really, really took in a lot of information and just made me just grasp life at such a higher level. So what was what was the first big moment? Because you're working with uh Young and May, right? And then you go to This is 50 and you have some excess. I mean, four million in three months is pretty good. Yeah. Okay. But what was the first eye opening moment like, oh nah, this is it. The first eye opening moment, and um, shout out to Chewy. When Chewy had came out of jail, I spoke to Bobby Schmurter. When Bobby came out of jail, um, I told him. And Bobby was like, fuck out of here. He did one of those. Now, no Bobby from regular Brooklyn. I'm going everywhere yelling about, yo, these are my guys, Brooklyn. I'm going everywhere. Now, God already has them on their journey. But I am literally, without him even knowing all the time, how many meetings I'm taking. I'm sending this up. I'm trying to get it. I'm literally sending Bobby music everywhere. And people is literally like, these are your little crip friends, bro. These niggas look dangerous. There's no girls in these videos. There's no chorus on this song. This is not even his beat. This is freestyle from Lloyd Banks. This is going nowhere, bro. This is not to go. 
And I'm just like, yo, there's something about this. Everybody in the town is talking about it. They're breaking it at all the Brooklyn clubs. Everybody's going crazy. All of my friends in Brooklyn is like, yo, we're standing by this. We're going to break this record, bro, no matter what. We love it. And nothing is happening. Mm. And then it goes viral on Vine. Mm. And Bobby throws the hat yeah, and no one yeah. knows where it goes. It's the most viral clip. It's one of the first viral clips that broke a record. Mm. You get what I mean? Like broke a song. It goes up. Everybody goes. The record goes. Every single label after that called me and said, how the fuck did you know that was going to work? Mm. That's what I consider one of my first moments because that's when I go, they know I got sense. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Mm. Prove me right. My boy got a million dollar deal. I knew it. I didn't get him signed to Epic. I didn't walk him through that deal. But I was calling everybody about it. They all knew months ahead of time. Mm. And that 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 vindication when everybody said, "Yo, how the fuck did you?" When everybody called me, I said, "Oh nah, I'm not listening to none of you niggas. I've been knew I knew more than y'all niggas, and I didn't know how I was gonna ever prove. I didn't know what. I had no proof in my head. Me, I'm arrogant, but it's proof. Mm. I see it before y'all. That came up. That came after That's Young MA. So Young MA ain't dropped all yet. Young Ma's not even a, not even rapping. Yet. So you was working with, this is before this is fifty. Yeah. So you was working with Bobby before you was even working. I with... I wouldn't even say it working for Bobby. That's my friend, and I was just going everywhere, like helping with Bobby and doing shit. Like that's so early. Nothing was. I didn't understand nothing. I couldn't think about yo. Let me get in on. I couldn't. There's not. It's not even a realistic thing. Mm. Bobby is going. I'm in the studio with him a couple times. Like, literally, like, bro, let me get these records. Let me take this out. Yo, let me get you placed. I'm trying to get him beats. He's literally like, all right, my nigga, I'm fucking Bobby Schmerder, my nigga. You're my nigga from Brooklyn. Move up, my nigga. Like, it's literally like, my nigga, we're hot. My nigga, Meek Mill fucks with us in 2014. Yeah, that's like, nigga, we're hot, 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 mm -hmm. hot, hot, hot. Nigga, we get Cali. We got everybody going 50 cents. Everybody's jacking. And I'm just trying to do anything to, to like, be like, look, nigga, I know what I'm doing, bro. I was telling everybody about your record. And Bobby's like, come to the studio, link me, whatever you want to do. You get what I'm saying? Literally, come. Quick and quick segue. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. But this is going this is going to throw it all off track. Because you just made a great point. Why do we try to erase the history of Meek Mill? Because you just said in 2014, Meek Mill is fucking with me. I remember that time. Like, mm -hmm. like, but now it's like we all forget. You want to know why? Yeah. It's very easy to answer. The Twitter? Um, no, it's just Meek Mill did not make correct relationships with internet personalities and too many of them don't jack him and you we are seeing the power of going against media because the internet controls the timeline mm. so if you are going at it look look at the power of look what academics did to little baby academics is really showing niggas that he big dog now academics cut little baby's legs off for a while Mm. Until this Central C record, Little Baby was under big fucking pressure. And it's the whole thing where Little Baby wasn't making good music, it is totally, totally not true. It's making the identical same music. The new Central C record is not even a new sound. It very well could have been two years ago. Mm. It's the identical same Little Baby. Identical. But when you are going at somebody who can sway... Academics went live and puts 50,000, 60,000. You know, when they when when Kanye got mad at Kai Sanat for calling the shoes wrong and they tried to press him fast, it's because they learned really quickly. <laughs> Was like, this nigga can definitely change did, yeah. the culture. Even if Kai don't know it yet, Kai can change the culture. Mm. These guys have powers that they don't even really understand. When you control the masses... At that magnitude, you can change. Shade Room is the most powerful media outlet in our country. Mm. Like by a lot. People go, I don't listen to Shade Room. Sure you don't. You listen to someone who's following them. Shade Room controls the damn, Shade Room controls media. Shade Room is more powerful than ABC, Fox 5, NBC, CBS combined to our culture. Mm. By 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 so much, and people will go. What? This is stupid. Da, da, da. Let this go viral. The the media blogs, Shade Room, Spiritual Word, Hollywood Unlocked, On Site, Neighborhood Talk. Those five yeah. are more powerful than ABC, NBC, CBS, whatever is next. 
have a ball. They are more powerful. Want me to bust it? Let's go, let's go viral. Let's start talking hot. Let me show you something. When you go and we look at the Super Bowl, right? The Super Bowl has 60 million viewers it had this year, right? The Super Bowl made 60 million people tune in. You know how many followers Cardi B have? A lot, probably like around there. Hairline, oh, maybe. Uh, Shit, she might have a hundred. Hairline over, a uh, hairline under two hundred million. Damn. Okay. Cardi B has a little bit under two hundred million followers. Let's say one hundred fifty, because I don't want, I, I don't want to quote it. Right. If Cardi B literally could talk to every one of her followers, she's more powerful than the Super Bowl. Mm. Let that sink in for a second. That's just Cardi. Add Nikki. It's not a Cardi Nikki thing. Add anybody. Kim K, Kylie, Kendall. Have a ball. They're more powerful than the Super Bowl, which is the most viewed TV, uh, you know, just just moment in our entire world. country. That's probably the world. You get what I mean? I don't have the data for it. I yeah. know for a fact that America is, right? Probably Sound the might World be, Cup might yeah, peak it yes, around yeah, the world. Yeah. But in America, Super Bowl. Yeah. If Super Bowl does 60 million people, right? Let me just say this. 60 million people. A normal Super Bowl commercial now is, you know how much it costs now to get Super Bowl commercial? At least a mil. About five million, oh, right? Oh, okay. Let's play nice and say four, because I think it's like three million and change. So say four million. If you could charge four million for 30 seconds and Cardi has 150 million, would that not mean that Cardi is three times as more viewed in the Super Bowl? Mm. Then that means Cardi should be able to charge 12 million for every 30 seconds that she posts something, correct? Mm. That would be insane. That means Nicki Minaj, that means all of the monsters, Drake, could literally go, give me 10, 15 million for every time I say Coca-Cola, I say Pepsi, I say Nike, give me 15 million. So what the big brands did was, this is going to go up. If this doesn't go viral, Jesus, because people don't like when the information goes. The big brands forced Facebook to start lowering down the reach of all of the big superstars. Mm. Because if we allow these humans to control the amount of people that they do, then we will lose all control over who we need to pay. Mm. So Facebook, Twitter, Vine, Snapchat, whoever you want to take in, whoever you want, LinkedIn, have a ball. Every one of y'all, if y'all don't start slowing this down and implementing a way to start slowing this down, because we couldn't fathom that one person could become so powerful they're going to be worth more than the app. Mm. That's why. So what you're going to do is they start going, okay, create an algorithm. We got to slow this down. Slow this down. Because if we want ad dollars to keep running through this, we need it. So then we're going to start aggregating all your data. We're going to make you get a new checks. I agree to these terms. I agree to all of this. We're going to make you approve all of this. We'll make you approve every single ounce of this. And now we got all your data and now we'll control everything. And now we'll sell all your data to the brands that want to run ads. And we will not allow you to reach more than whatever we want. Mm. That's why when you used to be able to say coronavirus or anything, which, you know what I mean? The C words, and I want you to mute it because that will deep, that will slow down your YouTube when you say that line, but when we said the those two words and people's things were getting slowed down, they were like, how? If Instagram possesses the, the technology to put captions on a video you put, would they not possess the technology to identify what you're talking about? Facts. Would they not possess the technology to know what you're talking about to then alter who they want to show it to? Mm. If the algorithm is so advanced and it continues to teach itself as we are learning in AI, would they not possess the technology to then go, whatever you're talking about, we will show who we want, and then we will not show who we don't want it to see. And That's we can no. charge you for seeing So now once people. you go in and now you go and you fight your whole life to go get a social media foundation and to go get a following, and now you go punch, I got 100,000, I got a million followers, I got all of this, I am popping my brother, let me send my message to my million people, and then they go and they send your shit to 60,000 people, and you go, how is this possible? I spent the last 10 years of my life building this up. Why can't I talk to the people that have already bought into my brand? Because Facebook goes, that's not in the best business of us. Mm. Damn. So now when they go and you think about this, and you think about what all of this is, they've already moved the power back to themselves. So any outlet to go full circle, because I do this, 
when you go full circle and you go back to the, the, the monsters, Shade Room, Hollywood, Spiritual Word, Neighborhood Talk, all of them, and, and other, they uh, can possess a large amount of people because they are getting to so much more people, even when Instagram limits them, they're still reaching more people than anybody else can. They are more powerful than any channel in any state in the country. So basically, because academic is one of those channels. Well, academics on the rap side, one million percent. Academics has the most powerful rap platform. So he game. becomes shout out to Ak. He he becomes a machine, so to say. Academics is is the equivalent to those five overall. Right. Academics, no jumper, rap, say cheese. I don't know what else. If I think, I wouldn't even. It probably would be just academics, Joe Button. Well, Joe Button, Joe Button doesn't do enough of it. And uh, but if he wanted to say something, he could move the needle. Possibly. Yeah. So like, I wouldn't possibly. even say. And I say possibly, even though Joe Button is very influential, but not 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 even in the breath of these guys, because mm. Joe Button doesn't control a demographic that that would react the same way. Academics yeah. controls a demographic that if at goes, we're not jacking this, they'll sit on the computer and go. Joe Bunn can yell any amount that he wants, in all respect to Joe, but Joe's demographic is older than an act. Those people have jobs, careers, families, children, wives, husbands. They're not, he can't make them do something. Right, yeah, that makes sense. But so essentially what I'm saying is act becomes the machine and going back to me, once you go against the machine, it's like going against the, the platform. It's not like. Mm. It is. These Damn. thinkers ran into a brick wall that they can't climb. And they continue to think that this was about academics. That's where all of those guys are wrong. DJ Academics is a human, but DJ Academics brand is, is so strong. Yeah. It's nearly, it's, it's the closest thing to bulletproof possible because academics has already been shamed and joked and played on everything. And that's why he never used to flag when they'd be like, you're fat, go eat burgers, you're a pussy, you're a bitch. All of these things, act didn't delete him. Mm. Act let it go. Because if you loved him through dissing him, what how, what can hurt him? Mm. I knew act. Me and act was pretty close for years, for a while. When I was at This Is 50, there's times when we would speak and then me and him kind of, I guess, started to fade after he really started to go crazy with the 6 9 shit. Mm. You know, towards the beginning of the act, that's a whole nother shit for you. So how did you, like, I'm, this is crazy. So you come into This Is Fit. Before we go there, go do you understand what I'm saying with the control? Yes, of Insane, course. Insane, right? 100%. 100%. Imagine, just, because we're going to go wherever you want it to go. But just to close that out, just imagine that these companies are literally limiting all of our, I got 100,000 followers. I can't even find a post that I could show you that got to 100,000 people in the last year facts yeah. it just doesn't happen i got like two posts that went to over and then, 100, and then the posts that do go over a hundred thousand if you look at the analytics most of the people don't follow you 100 percent because they're <laughs> feeding it to new people like yeah here entertain and then just do that sporadically because they know it's worth more if if i can get a hundred even half that if i can get fifty thousand of my followers every time oh that's money in a bank oh yeah we charge we'll, we'll be you, you'd be you'd be worth so much which is why the kids Side note, who's in that top five again? And I want to go again. Kaisenot. We go back. Kai mm -hmm. For sure. Kai Sinat, Aiden Ross. These are monsters. 100%. Though that level of control that Kai has is insanity. Mm -hmm. That he literally can have 100,000 kids that just look at him and observe. It is so powerful that all the data analysts are literally like celebs. Go there now. Nicki Minaj didn't even want to put out her single till she went over there. Mm. Went and was and was astronomically uncomfortable around him. Because mm -hmm. the whole time, I know He's Nikki scared. well enough yeah. to go, why the fuck am I here? Mm -hmm. Like she, she knows she understands Nikki she has a, to be. Nikki is the best woman rapper ever, mm. right? The best. And is literally having to go to a 22-year-old kid's crib, play in his living room while on TV, and then listen to jokes and be giggly giggly when she goes... My nigga, I have went at it bar for bar with Sean Carter. I have went at it bar for bar with Dwayne Carter. I have went at it with Aubrey Graham. Are y'all niggas insane? I am literally... That was one of the I best am, verses I am, ever. I am literally one of the best rappers ever, and I am in this kid's living room having to entertain. And Kai is not even... Kai's not even doing this to manipulate. He's like, 
Yo, I'm just lit. My fans love me, man. Shout out to Amp. Shout out to all of them. Phantom, all of them. <laughs> like, y'all niggas is on fire, fire. But this whole shit that's going on, it's not their fault. Mm. It's not anybody's fault. But the reality is, is that the artists that now go, I cannot win unless I get in front of that many people. Because no matter how much followers she has, the big platforms are still limiting it and being like, no, go buy ads. Mm. Do you know what it costs to get in front of a million people on Facebook? It's literally like 15, 20,000. Mm. You'd spend $100,000 a week just to get in front of your own follow. It's insane. They've crippled the creator. Mm. But we have no other option. So, we, yes, we go. What do we do? We hide our likes. You know what? When the comments say that you're trying to do it because you're trying to hold on to a pride thing, a digital pride, like, I don't want people to think I'm not hot because everything is subjective on the internet. It's insane. They literally have crippled the creator and been like, you will shine when we want you to shine. That's why people ran to TikTok. TikTok's not better than Instagram. The algorithm just played nicer. Mm. What, what does TikTok do that's better than IG? It's nothing. TikTok just allowed people's content to, to get seen. seen. And people said, nigga, if I could go over there and get a million views and go over here and get 50K, I'm going to the million. I love TikTok. No, you didn't. You loved that a million people were there. Mm. That's it. There was nothing more cool about TikTok. It's not. It's the identical same thing. And Instagram really went up and held the wheel and was like, we're not moving. Mm. It's insane. I feel like you've been had a grasp, but not maybe not this deep, but I feel like you've been had a grasp on this content thing, mm -hmm. like going viral, like mm -hmm. making moments. Like, I mean, before I thought about it for sure. Yeah. Where did that come from? Mm. Treating the internet like the cafeteria. I've been at the cool table my whole life. How do you make this the cool table? But how did you care? Like, because... I feel like when the internet came around, it was cool. It was a thing for sure. Mm -hmm. I remember a time we was trying to go plat. We was trying to get hundred likes, mm -hmm. right? But I wasn't like, I was. I wasn't using it to to benefit my my career or even looking at it as something that can build. I feel like when I look at your your, your history or the history of your career, I feel like you knew that from the jump. Yeah, hundred percent. I just I I wanted to. I I I grew up on Mamba mentality. I, I studied Kobe to the depths of that nigga's. Just core, my nigga, Mamba mentality to outwork, to outdo niggas, to literally outperform. You know, I, I live in, like, I have a son. I'm going to name my son Kobe. Like, mm. I that's one person that I idolized on every single aspect of it, you know. And I just, I, I looked at it and was literally like, yo, this, this is how to move. That's what it was. When I used to rap, I had more bars than everybody. When I used to play ball, I wanted to run longer than everybody. Just what it was. I was going to be the best or chase that thing. I chase perfection every day. I fail every day, but I chase it. Let me ask you this then. Yeah. For your, your love for Kobe, right? Yeah. And let's just go some more goats. Mm -hmm. Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. Talk about LeBron James. Mm -hmm. Talk about Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that the goat mentality is something that you acquire along the way or something that you're born with? No, 100% you acquire it. Yeah, I don't believe that born with it shit. I don't believe it. Too many, too many um, adverse responses is what builds you. You get what I mean? Too many. Mm. I, I I look at it like um, then I look at it life like it's way more luck, way more destined. I don't think that. I think, you know, I, I am trying my best. You know, some of my more religious friends, you know, like you know, row when we get to the row shit now. So, I mean later, well, row's trying to get me more and more into my spirituality and understanding. But I'm still not a full believer that God has a total plan for all of us. Mm. I don't believe it. I think God puts us all here. I think we have free will. I think God um, saves a lot of us because he's just this forever forgiving power that's literally like, man, I am trying to save you and you are you are effing this up, man. Mm. You know, I think that when people kill people, that is not a part of God's plan. Mm. I don't think so. I think that's people who literally have lost it. The devil got control of their soul, and it was like, I'm taking a life today, and that's just what it is. Now, God, to accept you back if you go and ask for forgiveness, and you go. But I bring it back down to what that is, is that I just don't believe that this is all like, we're a baby, there's going to be a star. Like, I can track back where everything came from with me. Like, I'm so mentally present. Like, I know what made me go, I want to go outside. My mother was petrified. There was no male in my family. And I said... 
I don't like feeling scared. I'm going to go see what's so scary outside. That's how then I mean. when I was like, oh, this is what y'all are scared of. These are my friends. This is what it is. That built it. Then I get taller. Then I go, I want to play basketball. How do I get it? Oh, I'm getting my ass bust. How do I not get my ass bust? All right, I got to run. I got to do some calisthenics. There were, there were steps to where it went. Then I got good at playing in front of crowds. I, I loved what that was. I'm putting up 30, 40 points a game, a 14, 15-year-old kid, and I'm literally like, all right, let's go to AAU. Let's do it on a higher level. And now you keep going, and these things have all built who I became and made me go, so that's why I don't believe this. I was designed because there were points where I feel like, yo, God is like, yo, you can get up or you can just stay in the bed and be lazy. I don't think God is like, I want you to be lazy. I think God gives us all the power and the freedom to do so. And as long as you honor him and be good, he will continue to bless you and answer your prayers as you ask as best as you can. You get what I, as best as he can, as best as he sees fit. But I don't believe this whole pattern. So so in an authentic response, no, I don't believe that um I don't believe that, you born that, with that we're born with it whatsoever at all. So okay, so yo, you DJing, yeah. you before you even get to uh, this is fifty, you telling people about a record, so you're pushing a record, mm-hmm. so you're playing A and R. Yeah, 100%. right. Do you stop playing A and R when you get to, to to this is fifty? Like all of this is at one time. Now all I start the time. learning how to multitask. Now I'm DJing in the night. I'm trying to find records in the early, in the day because now I have the power and the ability to break the record in the club. <laughs> I wanted to record. I used to try to get camera work. That's why I bought my own camera. I used to make my mans, whoever was around, was like, nigga, steady arms, nigga. That's how I used to tell her, steady arms, nigga, and just put that camera on me. And I used to break records in the clubs and all of that and literally send it to the rappers and be like, look, I broke your record. And the rapper started rocking with me and be like, yo, when I come to New York, I'm coming to come chill with you. Literally. It was insane. So I just kept, I knew it. I knew how to break the records. I knew what it was. I'm one of the fir- first DJ in New York, play Key to the Streets, Wife and Lucci. Money back, yo, the early shits. It was just so much um, Uber everywhere made in Tokyo. That's how I got these relations when they came up and was like, nah, I'm rocking with Punch. Mm. Like, literally, I'm breaking these records. You know what I mean? And 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 going hard with it and recording it and making it a thing and putting it on my gram and so this the, whole thing. The moment you meet 6 9 right? Mm-hmm. How long did you know about this guy before actually working with him? Well, the 6 9 thing came, I think it's... I think it's a little unfair to the story without doing Young and May first. Okay. Because the Young and May really leads up to what it was. So when designer, so it, it all trickles into a certain thing. I meet designer in, in downtown Brooklyn. They go to- What year is this? This is 15. Okay. This is 15 December. But you at, this is 50. I'm there as the trial shit now. Okay. And literally, they're seeing me though. Remember, I'm not on the, the trial YouTube. Yeah. They're there. They're like, yo, bro, you're the guy. They don't know. Yeah, you yeah, get yeah. what I'm saying? They're like, yo, I've seen you. Yo, bro, how do we get this? Place me this shit. I'm talking about, I hear Panda when there's hundreds of views. You get what I'm saying? On SoundCloud. They had put it up, take it down, whole bunch of shit. I literally am like, yo, bro, they just gave me this new thing. I want you to be my first interview. I take the record. Um, we got my man Starks, we got my man Sir Manny, we got my man, um, these are lit DJs, we got Mad Out, we got a lot of the guys that I rock with, even Booth, we got a lot of these guys who are literally like a peer group that we're creating in the DJ community, because the OGs, the Flex, the Clue, the Self, they're not jacking niggas. Yeah. They're literally like, eh, whatever. They're not jacking you. They used to try to sign niggas to DJ teams and crews so you'd be a part of them and then go under their wing, and I'd be like, I'm never signing to none of these niggas, mm. Ever. Because I've watched them sign niggas and then literally put you on the shelf. Like, it was like chess. It's like, you getting too hot. Yeah, you one of us. Yeah. <laughs> Get it back there and chill out. Mm. I swear I seen it. So when we're going, we breaking this record, this Panda record is going up. When I bring designer up to go um, come up to the channel, to the um, the office, we do it. Literally two days later, 50 Cent sometimes hears Panda and literally is like, who the fuck song is this? He's playing it. Shout out to my man Jay Bettis was in the office and Jay was like, yo, that's Punch's boy. He just brought him up here two days ago. He's like, Punch? He's like, yeah. Punch brought him up and was like, this is going to be the biggest record in the world soon. I'm co-signing it. The last time I told y'all this was hot, nigga. Don't play around with it. Panda about to be the biggest record in the world. I stamp it. And I did not stamp a record since then. So be clear. I'm literally like, this is my next stamp right now. Panda, mm. Panda, Panda. And literally, niggas was like, Panda, this shit's like future. You're a bug out. Same feeling, same energy. I said, it's going to go. This going to go. I ended up doing like a party with him, DJ with him, this whole shit. I'm like, oh, this going to go. Designer had like a manager girl, Zana. They was, everybody was trying to pull him in a million different directions. I'm literally like, bro, trust me, this going to go. 
50 calls him up like, yo, come meet the nigga. When I get up to the office, 50 Cent's playing Panda. Repeat, 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 repeat. I'm literally like, holy shit, 50 call me. Yeah. Yo, bring the designer nigga. Designer come up there. And designer literally comes, meets 50 Cent. And literally is like, yo, this is crazy. Designer was in Lexington Projects in Brooklyn and bed just literally chilling, not doing shit. And then meets 50 Cent. The next day, Leo Cohen. The next day, Stephen Victor. The next day, Kanye West. Damn. And then Kanye West, the one that actually ended up signing the good music. Who signed maybe eight days after he met 50. So, and that's maybe nine days after the interview. Damn. So my interview goes up. It does millions and millions of views on Facebook. I'm now lit as shit. Everything is going crazy. Did a million on a gram, something like that. It's like, now I'm literally like, my first interview, I'm doing a million. Yo, I'm on fire. So now it's easy to kind of even like work with a young M.A. I had Young M.A. before, and I had this moment where I was like, yo, am I going to be with designer? I'm going to be with Young M.A. Young M.A. would be with me all the time. Young M.A. was my friend. You know what I mean? And that's why the Young M.A. shit bugged me out the most, because that was my actual friend. Designer, I didn't know. I met him a couple times, and now he's here. But that wasn't my mans. M.A. was my mans in my crib, back and forth, knowing moms, just everything. I know all of the dogs that's around her. Everything is all cool. We go. When Ooh comes out, it's like maybe like three weeks after Panda goes number one. Literally like, yo, bro, my brand, I'm like, I bugged out. Should have been with designer. This is lit. I don't know what was going on. Then Ooh comes. Mm. Ooh goes viral in fucking 15 days. Mm. The record goes, and I'm literally like, yo, my nigga, I'm the luckiest nigga in the world. There's a third hit I'm getting. Labels now are starting to call me, yo, do you want to work a &R? Yo, do you want to come up here? And these are the moments where it's a little bit more towards your shit, where I was so confident in what I was doing that I was like, no. I'm like, I'm free to move. I'm free to travel. I'm with 50 Cent. Like, why do I want to go to a label and now get restricted? You get me? Yeah, yeah. And I didn't want to. That was restriction who kept me out taking those jobs. So I travel. We tour the entire, like, America. While this is going on, my rap shit is starting to pick back up. I started. I put out a record called See Me With That Same Energy. When that phrase was getting really big, I had a record. Hot 97 was playing it. Flex used to play my record. Camelo, Enough, everybody. Power 105. I had a rap record that was in rotation in New York City. Mm. It's playing all the time. So now I'm rapping. I have interviews. I got designer a little bit. I got Young M.A. I'm literally crazy. I'm doing a million views. I'm like, oh, I'm about to take off. I don't know which one is going to go, but something is going to go, 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 go. I'm out of here. Then me and Young and Mate did Brooklyn Everywhere, mm. which was like a freestyle that we had did yeah. when we went. And I was just talking to a bunch of scammer play around money bars and shit like that, just joking. And then the record goes viral. Then Young and Mate's shows started off when I would be on stage after playing records. Then I'd play Brooklyn Everywhere, rap my verse, leave. And then when M.A. would come out, she'd rap her verse. And that's how we would start Young and Mate's shows at the very beginning. Mm. She was insane. Like, I was literally like, yo, I'm now DJing, I'm her tour DJ, I'm a club DJ, I'm got a rap song with her, we're viral, millions of views. <laughs> so wait, what, did, what, happened, what happened with that relationship? Because I know, you talked so, about it before, but you ain't really never say well, too much. Authentically, to just be raw with it, me and that man had a fault. We never beefed ever. This is a girl I was around multiple times a week. In my opinion, it's not to drag her, She's it's so many years disconnected, but to just be authentic, and May wasn't the nicest with her mouth. Mm. like she's really like on some say whatever the fuck it is and kind of was a piece of shit to people a lot of times you hear there's a lot of rumors all right she's a fucked up person whatever me and may never had an argument ever and then one day some weird shit happened i had like a, a girl with me smoke she was smoke she was lit everything like that she ain't like it temperature came got into a little back and forth then it kind of positioned and made it look like i was doing weird shit her friends were scared to speak up to her, didn't tell her the truth. It was a whole bunch of weird shit. And I was literally like, yo, let's talk about it. And they just dubbed me and was like, I don't want to talk. Mm. And I was like, yo, niggas is going to talk to me. And niggas was like, yo, I don't want to deal with it, bro. I'm not with none of this shit. Fuck this whole shit. And I was like, yo, if niggas don't talk to me for the end of the night, I'm going to go home. This is my thing. Niggas ain't talk to me. I literally seen her that next morning after niggas like kind of dubbed the team meeting that we was. And it's the first time I ever really went into this magnitude of detail with it. And then I was like, you know what? I'm out. I text the manager and was like, I'm done. Mm. And he was like, nah, y'all got to talk. Because I had 25000 maybe waiting for me. Um, maybe something like that. Because she was about to go on tour with T Grizzly. And I think Rich the Kid, too. Somebody was in there. And, you know, getting paid every single show. We about to do all the cities. And I was like, I go. And they was like, yo, bro, you about to pass on the bag. Whatever the number was. Maybe 15K. I don't know. It was like, yo, you about to pass on the bag. And I'm like, yeah, I think I really, I let money run me. Mm. Money don't run me. I'm still, now I'm probably like a top five DJ in New York, not on radio. I'm doing millions of views. I don't need this. She want to move weird? My nigga, fuck that. Done. And me and her have never spoke since that day. Now, when she did press, every single time, she's never said my name. 
She's never even acknowledged it like, yeah, when I was at the beginning with me and Punch, I didn't want her to fucking give me a fucking trophy. You know what I mean? But acknowledge that I was a, a part of it. Hosted tapes when she was there. The This Is 50 Looks, the 50 Cent Relationship, 50 on Ooh. All of these moments of things, you get what I'm saying? I'm a part of it. Never shouted. So I lost trust in rappers, mm. which was the greatest thing ever. Because when I now meet 6 9 when the calls is coming and they calling from everywhere, yo, so-and-so, my nephew calling me, SD's like, yo, bro, they want to meet. Papa Boy's over here. Shotty trying to get a hold of me. Everybody's trying to get a hold of me. I think, uh, what's some energy? I, I feel so crazy. I'm not even trying to scum him. Oh, man. I feel so terrible, bro. I forget his manager name at the beginning, who I was like kind of cool with, too. I forget. I want to say Will. I'm so sorry, bro. It's not Will, though. I forgot, bro, and I'm not being weird. I promise you, it's my no, Dawson no, Mendes. He lit. It's been so many Charges years. Charge to the brain, not the yeah, heart. Yeah, yeah. So everybody's trying to get a hold of it. When I go over <gasps> there to go, literally, I meet Six Nine on camera, and then I just stayed that way. Is that the video that you posted? Mm -mm. No. And uh, the meeting isn't on. A lot of it isn't really on tape. Like I have mad of it. There's everything that I was around Six Nine is on tape. Mm. We go play basketball tape. We go to the store tape. We go to strip club tape. We go to the airplane tape. We go to the airport tape. Jet tape. Studio tape. When I'm writing shit tape. So much shit, All of the shit. So we heard that he was like, people say he was like a prop. People, he wanted mm -hmm. to be the fake. Like, was that true? How how was it actually? Like, was he was he really somebody that was trying to do gang shit but just couldn't and just failed miserably? Or was he somebody that gang members put in place so they can get money? I think both of those are a lie, and I really don't like ever speaking about this kid positively sometimes, but authentically, he wanted to be something, which most people look at as insane because of the age he was, Okay, but he wanted to be a gang member. That's what he wanted to be. He wanted to be blood. That's what he wanted, mm. and he became it. And when why, they, why would they let him in? I mean, you've been so close. Like, if, if you see a goofy or somebody that's like light skinned. I don't consider this is the difference. Everybody looks at the end result as a goofy. Not the, but if I'm seeing come around with long hair, mm -hmm. colorful hair, I don't know. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, even that was the like. Colorful hair is a rap props. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you see somebody that's different, I guess. Because, mm -hmm. you know, in our community, we don't, we don't accept mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. You see somebody that's different that's begging to get down, which that doesn't really happen in our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. You don't beg to get down. Like, you either like. We know what's up with the people. That's what's up. I totally with you. I'm going to say this, right? In the beginning stages, when anybody does anything and be like, my nigga, you want to do this shit? What you going to do? And nigga's like, my nigga, I'll fight. I'll do whatever, my nigga. Okay. And a nigga does these moments of jumping out the window. You be like, nah, that nigga cool. Okay. Then you just let him around. It's not like, my nigga, we going on a drill. You're going to hold the AR. You're going to hold it. It don't happen like that. Right. It's like, let them nigga around. Okay. Then he's around. I don't think that niggas were, like, when a lot of people go, yo, they was doing too much shit around him, that's later. Okay. He didn't, where did he come from? Where did he come from? Yeah, like. I think a lot of they, this, this, when I got there, he's there. Okay. You get what I'm saying? In reality, but where they came from was just neighborhood relationships. He just wanted to be around niggas. And this stuff happens. When you're trying to rap and there's a nigga that's lit, again, this is 2017. Let's just be graceful of time periods. Mm. When... This is before all the indictment, before all of the suck my dicks, before they're going to go into rap war, before all of this. This is a kid who gets millions of views from just doing fuckery on the internet. And it's like, yo, I just want to chill around y'all. And you like, yo, I get some views too and get some bitches. So he was getting views before Gummo. 100% because he was trolling. He used to wear shirts that would say like AIDS, I have HIV, I'm gay, um, I'm a slut. He would wear things that would get attention. It must have been locally because I I never seen it before Gummo. If you Google it, I mean, you might not have paid it. I mean, Gummo was astronomically viral, but he's went viral many times before it. Mm. Then Gummo happens, and that's a music moment viral as well. You know. Okay, so you come around from what time that you come around did Gummo? A couple drop? weeks, maybe days. Damn. Days before, and then it goes, and then it's a very short span. Gummo comes out. I, Sober 7th. How involved was you with him or his career at that moment? Gummo? Yeah. Not really none. But by the second record, astronomically heavy. Put this hook here. Put that there. Yo, lower the drums. Yeah, do this. Yo, yeah, put it up here. Here you go. Yo, I'm about to put Scum Gang up there. What you think? Yeah, put it right there. Yo, put that echo on it. Reverb. We're in the studio. I have the. I have these video sessions. Damn. Mm -hmm. So from that, and then, and then they're like, yo, what are we going to do? It's like, yo, Gummo is all blood. All right, cool. I'll call the dogs. I'll call the cuss. Yo, ah, yo, go. Here we go. Got... Everybody coming, all my niggas from the hundreds, all my niggas from the nine. 
Shout out GS9 Gino at the top of the video. Scooby does this. Everybody's around there. All the, they got monsters out there. Like the monsters. But in your mind, mind, you because you from you from I'm the from neighborhood. One hundred percent. You're not thinking, man. This can get out of control. No, nothing's happening. There's nothing happening yet. Like we literally went to Fulton and Utica, which is like across street from Boys and Girls. We were all in a parking lot, and there might have been sixty locs. Or it might be maybe a hundred bloods, but Blood and Crip don't have beef out there at mm. that time period. They still don't most, but we ain't no beef. So we out there, it's all certain sets of crib, all bloods is in there, and it's lit. And the big bloods out there, yo, nigga, everybody's sanctioned, everybody's lit. No fuckery goes on out here. Everything on my name. So they coming out there. My guys got the dirt bikes out, the cousins, everybody, everybody's loked up, it's crazy, blooded out. I'm like, this is crazy. I never seen so much shit like this. And we outside, I'm in the middle of it. That's the that's the the start of we outside. Mm. A lot of people don't, and I, I say it, and people go and try to jump out the window. But you're not going to find many videos that be like, we outside before that. Because that whole we outside started then. That we outside was shots at the label execs and the radio DJs and the music heads that's writing about music that never were outside. That's where that came from. Mm. So when all the gang is, we outside, yo, Punch, we outside. And I started that shit called Outside. If y'all go YouTube search Punch Outside and then go find somebody saying they were outside before that. The term of outside turns into something so different now, which I love it. The word is the most trendiest word in the planet. White people, we're outside. But when it started in 2017, that was what we used to say as a diss to the label guys that would not be where I was. And a lot of the gang is like, yeah, we outside where y'all aren't comfortable to be. That's the core of the phrase. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? And at that point, New York, they had this sex shit. Yo, you know the vibes? It's like, nigga, this is who we are. You know the vibe. These are phrases that came from our city and our town, and then everybody just kind of took it. You get what I'm saying? But that shit is from us. So when we there and it's all the cousins there, these are my friends, too. Like, you got to, I'm like, what's up? What's cracking? Ah, you just have all this shit. Everybody's there in one. We had a video shoot. Go back and look. I'm out there. Chains on, hoodie on. It's nothing but ratchets in the parking lot and monsters in there. And nigga, that shit was a day. We shot the Kuda video. And you know what I mean? And then you see all the Crips, all the Bloods. And it just made Takashi look like the most polarizing figure ever. There's this kid with Crips behind him and Bloods behind him. What the fuck's going on? Mm. And it just it just kept getting bigger. How much money you think you made from that that whole era? <laughs> just curious. The 6 9 era. Uh, I don't know. I was... I don't know. Could be half of it. And I don't know, man. From and this was a short period of time. Yeah, eleven months, something like that. Now half a ticket in oh a year? God. Yeah. Easily. So let me ask you this then. We know, coming from where we come from and our environments that I'm lying, Uncle Sam. I'm lying, man. If we get in I'm trouble, lying. like we get pressed down, the nigga who brings a sneak around or that brings a nigga that ain't really fit to be around, when we bring them around, it falls on us. Okay. We know that, right? Mm -hmm. It crashes. The plane mm -hmm. crashes. This nigga gets locked up. He talking about snitching. How much of that fell on you? Or how much do you, did he try to like, oh, the friends uh, try like, yo, you was around this nigga. Or you brought this yeah, nigga around. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've had those moments. I remember one day Chewy called me yelling and cursing. Because <laughs> remember I got Bobby to do stupid over yeah, the phone. Yeah, yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I... I laugh at that shit. Nobody, because at the end of the day, nobody's really like, it's your responsibility for this human. And just because I put niggas around to make music money, and I didn't put, there's certain relationships that I initiated, but a lot of it was prior. Like all of the shits around all of the treyways and all that, that's before I get there. Hmm. He's already cemented into the whole treyway shit. Um, a lot of that, you can look at it and go and, and just be like, um, they don't blame anybody. I think they started to blame each other internally, and that's what started to make a lot of the set trip and shit happen, and a lot of their relationships to burn down, and a lot of the niggas... Because Takashi started out being a lot more welcoming of niggas at the beginning. Mm. And then he started to curve niggas as he started to get more and more bread. But I feel like even So there was the like, at the beginning, I'll say that there's 200 niggas around. And then as months go, it's 150, 120, 100... 80, 60, 50. I mean, but you got to do that when you get more money. It's smart. A is in B. 
I'm just telling you what was happening. So there are niggas that were around that might have had to jump out the window and beat up a security guard one day. There's a nigga that might have, yo, I'm about to go slap this nigga. What? And they jumped out the window. So there's niggas that are doing shit as courtesy of him. And they're like, nigga, like, I need something for it. And then he starts curving niggas and it just keeps going downhill. That's when he started to turn like a fucked up person. The implode of Treyway is all Takashi's fault. You see, I would like to think that if you like, cause you said before he even started doing a rapping thing, he was going viral for doing corny stuff, but just trolling. Mm -hmm. So if you encourage the trolling, it's only gonna get bigger. So now you gotta take responsibility for when it comes to a point of no return because you encouraged it to that point. Yeah, niggas weren't mad at the trolling, wasn't mad at the beef that came. They started to get mad at him being a disloyal person to them. The trolling wasn't the issue. These niggas are ready. You know, shout out to all the Treyways and all them guys. Them niggas is on action time. Them niggas is, none of them niggas is play around. None of them niggas is made up characters. Them niggas is ready for whatever energy come. They ready to run at it all the time. Shout out to all the guys that was there. Shout out Billy Otto, man. Mm -hmm. Like, these are the guys. Harv, Shoddy, Roe Murder. These niggas so are. So where do you think it went wrong then? It, because it, Kashi. For what, what though? He just started being a fucked up nigga and stopped giving. Out of nowhere. Do. Yeah. I've seen it happen. I know the starting point that it happened and everything. It's very, it's, it's, we spoke about it in documentaries. There's documentaries about this, which. Wait, what was the starting point? The starting point was when Takashi didn't want to pay certain people, certain shit. And then he put Shadi in a bad position that made Shadi have to stand up for his wants, which then made Shadi look like the adversary that was going against the gang, which in theory he partially was, but it wasn't gang business. It was music business. business. But it should have been dealt with more like, nigga, these are your dogs. And I think Shadi might have played those things a little off, might have, but realistically, Takashi's who started the 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 downfall of the of the problems. Wow. And then it just caused splits and then this big homie, this big homie don't like each other. Then I'm with him, I'm with him, I'm with him, I'm with him, and then all of that happens and it just keeps going down. What and everybody I has the my biggest frustration with the whole shit is People that weren't there don't know. And then there's a lot of people that believe that there's this rounded up piece of internet information that they've acquired and they go, I know what happened. I just be like, y'all niggas don't understand what happened and this is what it is, man. Free shoddy, free Roe murder, free Harv, free Mel murder, you know? Uh, shit, man. You was heavily involved in a friend of Bobby's murder. Bobby, yeah. yeah you Bobby was Mo. involved in the this 11 month span of uh 6 9 Seeing how... Seeing the back end of both of those situations, what do you think? How well, how the GS9 shit is way But not even just the GS9 shit is way different. But not GS9 even just shit is a movie that I still to this day don't understand why. Not even the court movie. stuff, right? Let's say like the love that Bobby got when he got out for being him being real. He the realest nigga, right? All of them. But there's not a there's not and I, I just, I got to use these yeah, quotes to do it. Fine. Nobody on the nine indictments snitched on each other. Right. The GS9 indictment. I say Bo Bobby because he was the face of it. And he, and, he, and he took, he, 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 he took more years to he get took Rowdy. To help Rowdy. But just while these platforms are there, you got to still, there's dogs that's locked that never come outside. So shout out to the nine, shout out to everybody in there. There's niggas that's still in there now that is on pace to never get out. They got life in change. Mm. But there's nobody on GS9 indictment that spoke. Everybody stood tall. So, so okay, with that being said, Which seeing- a rare Right. So seeing the love or the lack thereof mm -hmm. that Bobby got from the streets, even Rowdy, mm -hmm. Rowdy, compared to what happened when 6 9 got out. Just the difference in the career path. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? How do you oh, like, when it's, you think it's about? Totally that? different. I don't even. I don't even compare it. Rowdy's love in the street and Chewy love in the street is immense. That's the street. But they're the music not, industry tried to make it a street thing all the time. I watch it, but that's the street. Rowdy could go anywhere in the country. No one's going to do nothing to Rowdy. Rowdy is loved in the streets. Rowdy is. They look at him like nigga. You're a monster. You're one of the guys. I love Rowdy for it. Let it. Let Rowdy deserve all the flowers he gets. That's Rowdy. But right? why we don't see that happens it. with Bobby. What happens with Takashi and Danny, by that point he's Danny coming home now. Danny was not spoken about or embraced by the streets. Right. Danny was embraced by the masses. There are way more masses of people than there are street niggas. Street niggas is a very small group of men who said, I am going to abide by these rules that I'm gonna play by because I want to live under the laws of the streets. There is an astronomical 
dot in the water of how many street niggas there are in comparison to the rest of the country. But I don't understand that when it comes to this hip hop thing, because again, hip hop here's try their best to make it a street thing. So if 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 I see <clears throat> if we champion, there's no snitching thing, mm -hmm. right? And we have shit, one of the only people in my existence that I could think of. Somebody that held it down yeah. at the highest level of what we deem man time in the in the industry, Bobby Smurda, Roddy Rebel. Yeah. We have them right yeah. there. Mm -hmm. And I see their career after prison yeah. compared to 6 9 career after prison. It don't make sense to me. Yeah, but that's you're talking, you're mixing the the, the problem where you're going wrong is Chewy and Rowdy's respect is at a thousand. No one's ever taken but that ain't away from money their money in their pocket. That's a different, that's a different conversation. His whole career, which I don't like to compare them because it's two diff totally different worlds. The thing with him is that he came home to an astronomically large budget to where the label said, I know how to make this work. When he was inside, they were spending marketing dollars that was swaying it. Remember when they kept going, yo, if someone fucked your girl and kidnapped you, what would you have done? That's marketing. Let me ask you a direct question, right? How many times did 6 9 talk when he was in jail? Shit, I don't, I don't remember. Zero. I don't remember at all, yeah. He said not one word while in jail. When he was in jail, how many times did you see articles with his name on it? A lot. 10,000. Mm -hmm. You know how this internet works. Who ends up on the internet for free? Nobody. Mm. So that means that there is an astronomical amount of marketing dollars that came that was spent to position him to be spoken about. And if they're paying for it, are they not creating the narrative? Mm. So they created a narrative that allowed him to connect to the normal human being. If they fucked your girl and they kidnapped you, what would you do? And my nigga, let's just go about it. Because nigga said that they're not guilty. So I stand by it. I understand these street rules very delicately. If niggas pleaded guilty, it's a different thing. But the nigga said that they didn't do it. So the niggas that were allegedly a part of the kidnapping is two niggas. And the nigga that allegedly fucked his girl, who also said he didn't do it, that's one nigga. That is three niggas. Takashi put 13 people in jail, 14 people in jail. What about the other 10? Mm. Does, do, does he go down because he allegedly fucked your girl? Does he go down because he was cool with the niggas that did it? Like, that's why I look at it. And that's why when I don't listen to civilians talk about street shit, I ignore them because they don't understand. And I advise people to be civilians. There's nothing cool about the street. I promise you. There's nothing cool about being a tough nigga. There's nothing cool about being gang. There's no value in it. But civilians had way too much conversation. And this is why I hated the internet. This is part of why I started getting lower and lower because the internet allows idiots to speak. Mm -hmm. Civilians should literally go, hey, this is a gang issue. I'm not in a gang. I'm not going to comment. Like I, if they literally made a new law about, I'm going to blow this out of proportion, about tampons, I won't have an opinion. I don't have a vagina. Mm. It sounds insane, right? I don't want to talk about what you should do with a woman's body. It's a woman's body. Mm -hmm. Civilians should go, I don't want to talk about what happens with gang because I'm a civilian. If someone robbed me and slapped me today, I would tell the police. Mm. They're civilians. Let them be civilians. My biggest frustration with the internet is that millions of civilians had opinions, and I accredit that to one of the best digital campaigns I have ever seen to sway the world from going six nines the worst nigga in the world to you gotta give him a chance. You gotta you gotta understand that was one of the best digital marketing campaigns I have ever seen to take a nigga that violated every single nigga that risked his life for him and made him look like he was the victim and taken advantage of when he was the nigga telling niggas suck his dick mm -hmm. and no one was telling him that. See, I, you get, that's marketing. That's a fact. And I don't know, I was talking to Wayno about this. I'm all for the... Shout out to Wayno, man. I love Wayno. I'm all for the influence of the people that come after us, right? I never met 6 9 or Bobby Smurda. Mm -hmm. And that made me feel away because I just feel like, bro, what does that tell the, the person that... Not even if it's no gang shit, but what does that tell the young person that want to do it the right way? It's like, bro, Bobby really did it the right way. He, Bobby he, didn't do it the right way. Bobby not, would tell you he did it. Not Bobby would tell shit. you he did it the wrong way. I'm not talking about like street shit. I'm just saying like but being. I'm being real because Chewy will literally go, I did it the wrong way. Kids stay out of trouble. Don't do gang. For don't sure. Think of nothing. 100%. He I'm says just saying it, on though. character though. I'm saying like far as character, not street shit. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm taking the the, the, the the street shit out of it. Okay. I'm saying when it came to, to character, right? Because we can't try. It's like we tried to 
We try to separate it when it's convenient. No, because in hip hop, we don't separate it. But now when we talking about Bobby, like we want to separate it because it's, it's a, uh, we saying like he'll say he did it the wrong way. I get that. I get that. But nah, when we talking about character, forget snitching, not snitching, forget all that. Right. Yeah. He was a man of integrity. A thousand percent. Right. We as men walk around and we complain about men who don't have integrity. Yeah. But the person, the persons who did have it, they should be on top. That's how I look at it. Like I, we should I, be behind these I guys. I agree, and and I think that, but I think that the streets are behind them. It, that doesn't make the music connect with the people, and it still is the streets. There's all of this. No street niggas is talking bad about none of the nine. For sure. No street niggas is talking bad about Shoddy Harv. None of them. The streets still love these niggas, but that is a very small percentage. The problem with rap is that they try to push the snow snitching thing. Snow snitching is a very terrible message to send. No snitching is for the streets, hmm. not for a genre of music. But we try to incorporate the streets it's and music. Because what all happens the time. Is, is that too much street niggas, they start verbalizing their life, and then people. Uh, sexy it up and act like this is the rules of the culture. No snitching is not a rule of rap culture. Mm. No snitching is the rule of gang life and street life. And that's where it should stay. Mm. That's it. I'm all for the street shit that goes on when they're insulated in the street because everyone is grown and independently operates. When the shit spills over and a random kid gets hit, terrible. When the shit spills over and then a, a mother gets robbed, that's fucking terrible. They're not a part of the street. Let people be civilians. But if you're streets and y'all want to run loose and shoot at this nigga and shoot this nigga and this gang nigga dies and this gang nigga dies, that's what y'all independently chose to do. Mm. You get what I'm saying? That's street shit. I just don't like that too many that so many civilians have so many opinions on things that were not the streets, but that's the downfall of the internet. It allows if I have an account, I have an opinion. Because I've said so much polar extremes, it's probably gonna be a hundred thousand comments of people going, let me tell you about what Punch is saying. It's gonna happen. Mm. You get what I mean? So to just make my point straight up and clear as day. The no snitching street shit is a terrible way to live, but it is independent only of the street. And rap is not the street. Rap is a genre. And it is a genre of music and it is a culture. Hip hop is the culture. Hip hop culture is not no snitching and it shouldn't be. Because mm. if something goes wrong with niggas, go tell the police. I tell niggas, go talk to the police if you are a civilian. Mm. That's your... That's your Human American right, go talk to the police. But if you are outside and you go, I'm picking up a bandana or I'm repping my block and I'm doing all of these shits to the max and you are that, then stand tall. Because mm. no one forced you into this. We're not like LA where you're born into it. We're not. Not every Crip and blood nigga, their son is blood. You go to Cali, them niggas is like, oh, that's big, that's OG, that's tiny, and that's baby. This is their bloodline. That's how they That's how they deal with it. Out here, it's not like that. Mm. Your pops could be a whole gang member, and you could be a civilian. You get what I'm saying? So all of these things is just bad, but I've lost so many friends to this. It made me get low. I just hate it. Outside of... Bro, I don't even I don't know every single nigga on a GS9 indictment, but they're all Brooklyn niggas. They all from Flatbush. I wish everybody get to come home. Cause I promise you, niggas probably regret some of the shit they did. Nigga, they've lost years, my nigga. They've been in jail since 2014. They've been in jail for 10 years, not 10 jail years, 10 total years. That's a decade. Mm. They've lost a decade of their life in jail. Not lit. The Trayways, you think Shoddy wanna be in jail for 15 years? I speak to Shoddy. That's my man. Think Shotty wanna be in there, but he gonna stand tall because they made these decisions. But when people be playing around and acting like they wanna go and dibble dabble and play in the street, nigga, stay out of the way. Mm. I got niggas that's in jail that wanna come home every day, man. Shout out some of the guys, man. I'll tell you, shout out, yo, free, man, the guys, my, my, yo, man, GS9, G don't wanna free this guy, get his shit out. Sh shout out Scrap 1090, shout out to Jeezy Moolah, get my friends out. Like, this shit is crazy. These niggas are in jail for, it's bad. So that 6 9 shit blows up, and, like, now we got young nigga like Pop Smoke going crazy, <laughs> right? And he gets upset with you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I feel like we even skipped over the, because uh, I wanted to ask you about idols becoming rivals and the whole flex shit, but we'll get to it, I guess. We got time. It's a podcast. We got time. Yeah, break it up. Pop Smoke gets upset with you, right? But y'all was able to piece it up. Yeah, I think what happens is... It skips the part where we're, wh wh how the relationship begins. That's kind of what it is. 
Me and Pop fall out. Pop is a young nigga. I look at him like a young nigga from my town. You know, he's the cuz, he's outside. He's the young nigga. I look at him really like a young nigga. Um, he's like, yo, I want you to be my DJ. Come fuck with me, bro. Be my DJ. Fuck with me. You know, and um, I'm like, bro, I'm done with this shit. He's like, nah, be my DJ. Yo, bro, you in Cali with the porn stars. Yo, cuz, come on, bro. Shout out to um, my this man Big six, Show. Nine. This is after. Yeah. Everybody's in there. I'm now in Cali most of the time. I'm doing a whole bunch of other shit. I got different business endeavors. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? We're making different money and different things. Peaceful out of the way, right? Shout out to Big Show calling me all the time. He's, he's one of the dogs from the town. He's like, yo, I got pop smoke, bro. We need you. We need you to green like this because I still is who I am. If I post it, it was still going to go up. And pop was doing good. Pop had flexing out at this time. And they're like, yo, we need somebody to stamp it so it goes up. So Big Show calling me. I'm like, all right, listen, I'm going to come to the hood. I'm going to come fuck with him. Let me come tap in with him. So me and Pop is talking. We talking about mad shit. I'm like, nigga, don't be confused, nigga. You know, that whole Treyway shit, you know, there was mad security around. Don't believe the one side of the camera, nigga. You got to get security. You got to get this shit. Bro, if we come back out, he's like, yo, bro, just be my DJ. Come fuck with me. And I'm like, you know what? It'll be lit. I got one from Canarsie. This is going to be the first time I got one from the town. I bet. Push come to shove, um, there was some in-betweens, niggas who was repping pop at the beginning. We weren't on the best of terms. It's my man now, a thousand percent. We're way past this shit. But at that point, it was a lot of shit where another DJ from the town went and went with him and they reached out. One of his people that was like repping him reached out, even though pop was talking to me and was like, come here. And then when it came down to a show, the nigga basically was like, yo, don't hit, yo, bro, this is who's going to be. And they kind of just didn't communicate with me. And I felt, I went up to pop and I was like, my nigga. You're a gangster, right? I said, of course, cuz, what you mean? I said, why you ain't call me and tell me this is gonna happen? Mm. Why you ain't just say, big bro, cuz, yo, ah, uh -uh, yo, they want me to go with this DJ, they want me to do this. Why you got me going, yeah, nigga, I'm co-signing you all over the internet, da 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 Yeah, he with me, I'm calling DJs, I'm getting welcome to the party and mix show. I'm doing what I do to break the artist because I'm like, all right, I'm gonna be a DJ, I'm back. Why you didn't just call me? He didn't call me. So he, he like, yo, my fault, my fault. I'm just like, I don't be around it. I don't even want to be around rap anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm like, fuck it, I don't care. Pop Smart starts getting bigger. You know what I mean? Starts getting bigger. It wasn't obviously as crazy as it was, you know, terribly said, but after he died, because the record was getting bigger, trying to chart, I think they were like doing okay, you know? <laughs> New York is starting to love it. Dior comes out. I'm with him, you know, when they're putting out the Dior. I'm the one, I'm the first person to post up Dior when he was still calling Dior a Mary. Mm. And I was like, what is this? He's like, yo, call this a Mary. I'm the one who has the clip I recorded it when we put it in the back of the clip. It's all way before everything. It's before the label took over everything. I got on the phone with Steven, with Steven's my dog and everything now. And I'm like, yo, I got the European Connect because that's how we got 6 9 to go over Europe. I said, let's get Pop to run through the Europe shit. We'll heat him up early over there. It'll go crazy. So I'm a part of this shit in the early stage. And once that happened, I'm like, you know, I just want to be around it. They go, they do it, they worked it, they got everything right. They ended up putting them around. They did fantastic. They did a great job with Pop trying to build up his shit. He didn't really ever get the hit record. You get what I'm saying? It didn't really come straight like that, but Pop is going. Now, what happened was I went, I did this interview, shot the um, Queen's flipping, she money, flipped the script. I do it, and this rapper who was obsessed with me, he's so fucking annoying, he took a clip that I said about Takashi and he quoted it and edited it and made it look like I said some shit about Takashi in reference to gang shit about cuz and woo and all of this shit, which is New York, Brooklyn gang shit, and made it seem like I said something, which... Obviously, there's edits. Then the video starts getting reposted, reposted, reposted. Starts doing millions of views. Where it looks like Punch is going against gang coach. I'm like, hey, y'all niggas. Mm. Half of you kids that are this shit, niggas was outside when you were a baby. I'm with your big brothers. Mm. You get what I mean? But these niggas don't think. They don't think. They just do. You get me? So this video is going viral. I go address it on the internet. Pop sees the clip. Someone sends it to him. Pop responds to the clip. Goes on the internet. And, and goes like, yo, fuck Punch. Punch don't know what he's talking about. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, so I'm literally like, yo, cuz, get him on the phone. Get him on the phone now. Get him on the phone. What the fuck is all of this? Bro, what are you doing? What are you talking about? Nigga, look at the whole clip. I'm trying to get a hold of him. When I get a hold of him, he's like, bro, I fucked up my phone. I seen the whole clip. Yo, bro, I jumped out of the, yo, jumped out of the window on you. Yo, bro, I thought that shit was crazy. You would have never, bro, my fault. Let's fix it. I'm about to post this up. Yo, screenshot the call. I'm about to post it up. I said, no. Don't do that. Mm. You owe me one, nigga. I'm about to go do no jumper. Let me do no jumper, and then you gonna repost the no jumper shit. 
I need you gonna run up some of this cloth that you got because I haven't been outside like that on this internet shit, and you're gonna help run it up, and I'm gonna clean it up on the interview, and then you're gonna post it. Then we'll get up next week when we in the town. He goes bet. That was like the Thursday I do the interview on the Friday. That Monday, Tuesday is when he comes out to LA. I end up leaving LA, going back home. He calls me back, and that's the night when he went shopping and got the bag with the address and all of that. Yeah, that's day. Awesome. Then he goes to the studio that night um, with uh, Scooby Does and On Point OP. Um, shot the whole 1090s and all that. And it was in the studio that night, and they left the studio two something in the morning. He goes to the apartment, and then y'all not being able to like really get to the bottom of that. Did that fuck you? Because I mean, that had to hurt. Like bottom of what? Exactly? Like just. Could you say he was gonna post it, post a video? Like it's like yeah, y'all still uh, had uns, us, us, unfinished business almost. Well, to the to, no, not we business. But. No, we didn't though. We we cleared it up. Okay. To the public, it was unfinished. Hmm. But me and him, as men, we already fixed it two days, be three days before. But to the public, it might have looked like that. Because I remember when I was posting, people were like he don't even like you, and I'm like, that annoyed me for a while. Because I'm like, damn, my little bro, damn man, I wish that we would have spoke. More often, Dan, that's crazy. I just spoke to you. Niggas like, yeah, right. Spoke when? He don't fuck with you. And of course, the internet, the almighty knowing internet, they're speaking as if it's facts and that burnt me. But then when the No Jumper interview came out, um, which actually drops the morning that Pop got killed, um, I spoke about, I just spoke to Pop Smoke. So before he died, it was already verbally admitted. So when that interview came out, which ended up doing like a million and change punch on No Jumper, go Google it. Um, that's when it was like, it, it cleared up where it's like, yeah, Punch clearly spoke to him because he said it before he was dead. Mm -hmm. Or Punch would have said it and then been exposed again. You get what I mean? Yeah. So that was rough for me when Pop goes. But after that, I was done. I didn't want to be a part of rap no more. Nipsey dying. The Treyways in jail. Because uh, you was, was low-key almost done before the yeah. Pop situation. Yeah, I was. Yeah, but I was just, I was just, it was just that pulling me back and then going, I'm like, I'm done. Now, I know you told me the number you made, right? But just looking... And in, in, in retrospect, right? Mm -hmm. How, was that worth it? The six nine, uh, like I don't know. You just dealing with six nine. Was it worth it? In the end, um, it it feels terrible. What he did to niggas when he sent all these niggas to jail and cooperated against niggas that he wouldn't have ever known information to have put niggas in jail. So that's the terrible part. In reference to us breaking all the records and being on another run, I hate that a lot of highlights that I could hold on my career to be like, yo, we broke this record. Yo, first to a billion, first to a million. Yo, we did this, broke this record, and I'm a part of this. I hate that, shamefully, I don't, I don't ever want the plaques, even though those were my wins the mm -hmm. same way. It's like a lot of people look at the rapper like that's only his plaque. No, the manager gets a plaque, the engineer gets a plaque, the PR gets a plaque. If you did your job, you are the, the, like if the NBA championship wins the team, the Celtics Everybody. win, yeah. the trainer gets it. You are the championship trainer. You're the championship PR. Like everybody gets that because you are of the representation of it. And that burns me that I can't celebrate my win fully because of all of the shit, but it is what it is. Was you able to like, because I know you said you was fucking with the hoes out in LA, but I'm just wondering, it, the, did you, the adult industry. Yeah, yeah, the ladies, man. It felt, did you ever feel like you was running away from something? Because like, you was hot, like you was in a space where unstoppable. Yeah. And then you just stopped to. Was I run away? Yeah, I was 100% running away. 100%. That's not even a question. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that, I, I don't, it's, it's an unrealistic move. But I'm like, oh, the feds are going to come grab me because mm. they're taking everybody that's around. So would you say you felt like you was forced out of rap almost at that point? Oh, no, not out of rap. More like just out of the way of the of the media eye because I was like, yo. But you've been in the, that's what I'm saying. You've been in the media for so long now. Yeah. Like you made this, you created this space. Yeah. So like now that like feds is involved, like this yeah. whole 6 9 shit is going, yeah. it's like you were essentially doing something you love to make a pivot that I can't really say that you really wanted to do. Like it wasn't intent. Like you ain't. It was I like think, he was forced I, I think, to, I think to make the, a position. I think play. the toughest thing was that a lot of people look at it like it was way more gunslinging and shooting than what it really was. Even on the indictment, a lot of the shit that they're saying that people did, because a lot of the charges that people are still inside, a lot of niggas are saying that they're not guilty. So the alleged leads are going to fly. But the alleged um, shootouts and the alleged action times that they're talking about, a lot of those happen in a very small pocket of time. So there was a lot of time where he's literally like, suck my dick, suck my dick, but it's not turning into anything. They're just fights. Like, we were just fighting people. Mm. When it turned into the gun shit that they say that it allegedly was, that was way towards the end. 
Mm. So it, that whole thing where it's like, do you regret this? It's like majority of the run was just ignorant nigga shit. It really wasn't like too risky. You gotta, I'm just trying to think like you, like not even just 6 9 you breaking so many artists, right? Mm -hmm. And you making so much like just... I don't want to say about money. It's having so much freedom to do what you want and do yeah, what you love. Yeah, the access, the respect. Yeah. yeah, to have to stop, to go to L.A. So, yeah, it's it's girls. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's fun. Mm -hmm. But it's like, this ain't what I was doing. This ain't my life. Yeah, but I just I just continue to keep pivoting because it's not like it's not like interviews was my whole life. It's not like DJing was my whole life. It's not like A&R was my whole life. It was just everything. So I just pivoted. And I just went off the grid for a while. I had lost the want to want to be around rap. Mm -hmm. I didn't really want to do it. And then when... Then we did all of the documentaries. Everything went. That shit just maximize you more. I'm on the airplane where you could look at it, and that makes it go crazy. Everything goes up. We're making different money and different types of things. Um, sold one, two pieces of real estate. You know what I mean? And nothing ridiculous, but was able to make even more money. Come back and literally be like, yo, I've made a million dollars. I'm literally, before the flex shit happens, at that point when flex attacks me, I know I'm the number one DJ. In my city, that so wasn't flex already. happened after all of this. I don't flex know. happens at, not after pop, but after Takashi. Yeah, I was in L.A. with a house full of girls and and flex Eagle was attacking. And radio, <laughs> go crazy. Yeah, drop hella bombs. Yeah, and it was attacking. But that's at that point. That's when I knew that I was the number one guy. And of course, I mean, I can't ask you this, but I'm just curious because I'm I'm not from New York. But you're probably not as shocked as your your supporters are, right? Because like you're from New York, you probably seen it coming. No, hell no. Flex has never shot at anybody that wasn't a legend. Flex shoots at Self and Clue and Charlemagne and them niggas. That's who he was beefing with. Shelf is uh, Flex is going at the legends. So you look up to Flex still at this point. Uh, that's what that I'm assuming. Point, like because um, you're in New York, no, you're close no, to no not by that point. That's what um, I'm thinking. Coming up 100, percent yeah. So you see, this is the ultimate idols turn into right. Yeah, 100, percent yeah. That happens before you get upset. What's your first, like your initial? When Flex Reaction. really was acknowledging is when I really said, oh, shit, I'm really hot, nigga. Mm. This nigga's going at me. I was in the car, and he was like, yo, you're going to be you're gonna be stuck on YouTube for the rest of your life. <laughs> you're going to be better on Worldstar. <laughs> You'll never in your life ever do this. You're going to be on the internet forever. <laughs> Why don't you just start DJing on the gram? <laughs> About six minutes later, he just goes, punch? Get out of here. Bomb. And I said, it's over. Mm. And then that's it. I, I now install trolling. And then I was in front of Hot 97, 8 a.m. the next morning, in front of the office and started attacking. Mm. And I was on his body. I exposed that he had fake followers. I exposed that he was buying fake comments. I, I had screen recorded and I showed it. Um, he was with mad promoters. I got the promoters on the phone saying, yo, we didn't pay flex. This was happening. He was doing these things for free. I really like just punctured major holes in his armor. But by that point, I just really noticed that the people that were on the internet were not fans of him. Flex doesn't have fans in the city. If Flex had fans in New York, let me tell you something. If any rap DJ, this goes for any city, any state, if you are a rap DJ and you say you control your city, you should never have promoters. Mm. Throw the event yourself. Keep every single dollar for yourself. And they'll go, nah, that's not how it works. It, Cause you can't do it. Yeah, my son, the biggest DJs that I know don't throw their own parties. Because they're not they, because Well, some of them do. Because I'm lying. if, if do. you are, and it's there's DJs who obviously have done it. Yeah. But if you are a DJ that says you control your city, then go rent a venue and throw the party by yourself. Do not put on a promoter. Mm -hmm. If you are that powerful, it makes no sense to literally go. If you're that nigga. Everybody, come on, I'm DJing on Friday. You don't need a promoter. Yeah. They need it. A lot of DJs need it. You get what I'm saying? Because realistically, when you get older, it is way more difficult to control your market. Now, there are little kid DJs that can do this. Mm. There's a 21-year-old DJ in every city right now that could be like, everybody come out, and he will put that shit with 5,000 kids because mm. it is the easiest thing to promote when you're 21 years old because everybody's just excited they could go outside their house. But if you could put 5,000 30-year-olds in a venue... You are second to none. You are the man, 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 man. And you need to quantify that. Mm. And if you can do that and quantify it, you are going to make an obscene amount of money. So when Flex was like, I run the city, I said, why don't you throw your own event? Mm. You run it. You have Hot 97. You have the biggest radio station on the planet right now behind you. 
Throw your own party, bro. You're the big homie. I knew it. I was jamming him. He can't. It's not possible. He doesn't have that amount of control. They're putting him in positions to go. And that's when I started knowing he's doing parties for free. We start going. I start acting it. And when he was going at it, he was going back and forth. And he's going on the radio and me and forth. And I was really like, yo, I'm really going at Flex. This is crazy. And that's when I started getting the big calls. Mm -hmm. The dramas. Um, ended up speaking to Khaled through somebody. Ended up talking to SNS, Kid Capri. The legends. DJ Enough, Mr. C, rest in peace, OG. Like, the big dogs is calling me. <laughs> you are kicking up a lot of dust. <laughs> you know? And that's when I was like... All right, all right, all right. They're like, what you going to do, man? I said, it's not, I'm not serious. It's nothing. If I wanted it to be serious, I could have literally had 20 of the young dogs go in there and they would have pulled his laptop off his case. Mm. What would that have solved? That's ignorance. And that's not saying that he's not capable of doing something to me. He has enough money to go here, niggas. Go pay somebody. Anybody could do anything to you. DJs are at a victim position. They got a laptop, a book bag, a headphone. You're just in the club. You're like a sitting duck. It's not a comfortable scenario. And I was like, yo, bro, I'm not mad. It's not aggression. He's not. This isn't beef. He's trying to end my career, though, which is insane. But I still didn't take it as beef. I was like, eh, yeah, he's that... trying to go. But he don't got me on the ropes. I got him on the ropes. Um... And I, I showed... And I leave it in closing like this. I showed that the mighty, mighty flex is defeatable. And I, and I, if he didn't end me, which is what his goal was, and I left him with chinks of armor, I, I won drastically. Because I can't win. What would be winning? Him getting fired? He can't get fired. Yeah. So it's him leaving with chinks in the armor and me still being able to generate money and music. It's the win. I won. And, you know. As a DJ, I'll probably be like, I don't know, bro. That shit will piss me off because... What Drake said bothers me when the guys get to acting like the bros, and it's like that's how that's how it be coming up. But like niggas don't never really believe you until they see it. Like they gotta see it. Mm -hmm. There's been times I be telling me like, these niggas don't really. They scared to put a nigga on. They scared to take a nigga under their wing. Mm -hmm. they, well, they take a lot of niggas under their wing. They scared to put you on them. They'll put you under the wing and be like, yeah, I got you, I got you, I got you, and then kind of stifle your career. Mm. It's bad. Yeah. Mm. So what, what got you into? I feel like Ro Timmy is like. Total opposite of what we just we just talk about a bunch of rap beefing fucking drill shit. Then we got Ro Timmy, like actor slash like he's a really really talented guy though. I think he's one of the most talented human beings I've ever met. The what is it? What, what type of music? Afrobeat. At the Afrobeat. Afrobeat and R and B. Bro, the music that he makes, bro, is really good, bro. It's amazing. I'll play you the album today. It's amazing. I, I personally think that you'll come back and be like, I think Ro Timmy has a classic. I would literally put. I'd put my, I'd put my career that I think that the music on this album is classic worthy. Where where did this come from? Um, I was, uh, in the fastest way. What happened was I bumped into Ro Timmy Grammy weekend last year, twenty twenty three, and um, bumped into him, and um, me and him. He seen me in a, in a very interesting predicament, and it ended up just sparking our conversation to just speak more, and. Um, by this point, he was unhappy with like his management situation. He wasn't the most happy with how the team was going. He was feeling like everybody around him was kind of cruising. Mm. He's coming off In My Bed, which was a multi-platinum single. Mm -hmm. um, so he's already done something that's an Emmy Award winning show, platinum single. He's now like on top of the world. He's Dre from Power. He's from House Party. He's from all of these movies that he's on. And then he goes like, yo, listen, we're going to do this music shit. So now when we come, he's like, yo, bro. Let's just build. He invites me to Jamaica with him, and we go to Jamaica, and he's like, yo, bro, just come with me, bro. I'm going to the studio tonight and everything. We go to the studio. We see Egyptian, Sarani, and Valiant, which is like two legends and like the young hot nigga. That's the equivalent of it. And we're in the studio, and it's not coming out right. And I'm like, yo, bro, listen, what if you did it like this, and you were you went back to the zone where you did it like this, and he looking at me like, yo, how do you know this? You Jamaican? I'm like, nah, I'm American, bro, but I know this music. I study it. So Ro was like, yo, bro. You fuck with reggae music like this? I said, I know this shit forward and back, my nigga. That nigga's a legend, bro. Watch when he do this. He went, he recut the hook. Hook came out crazy, finished the record. Ended up writing a verse with Ro. Wrote another verse for him. And we ended up going, I'm writing for everybody in the studio. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, put this here. Yo, do this here. Produce that. Yo, move this, move this. And niggas is like, yo, what the fuck? And he's like, yo, my nigga, you know how to write? This is reggae. And I'm like, bro, I know how to write a lot. Mm -hmm. So me and him just kept being clicked up. And about a month later, whole scenario happened with his own management. He ended up firing him. And then literally was like, yo, Punch, I want you to be my new manager. And um, I was like, all right, cool. When you come to New York, let's talk about it. I was trying to run from it. I'm like, my God, I don't want to be no manager. I don't want to do nothing. I was just with you chilling. Let's do it. We came to my, and then he came to New York. I'm like, yo, let's go to my crib. He came to my crib and was like, 
my nigga, your crib is the <laughs> Mm. Your crib is the most fun place ever, my nigga. Like, this is it. <laughs> we in there, we playing ball, we chilling. This one, he was still fucking with hookah. And he's like, yo, bro, I want to write music. And I ended up writing um, Bestie and Birthday with him the first uh, day that I was, that he stayed at the crib. And we wrote, which ended up being his first and his third single for this new album that's coming out. Mm. And then in the fall, about, we go to the label, we present the music, they love it. We end up renegotiating a deal. They end up giving niggas the monster. Another duffel, go re up. We roll out this album, and then now we got this new shit. So now he's rolling out a double album, first of its kind, and it is half R and B and half Afro beat. Mm. Cause I, I was always feeling like Ro Timmy was underserving his fan base. Cause every time he would do an Afro beat song, the R and B people are like, "What's up?" And every time he do an R and B, the Afro people would be like, "What's up?" And I'd be like, "Nigga, you are one hundred percent Nigerian, bro. My brother is so talented. He's not. It's not a regular level of talent." When you look at him even in the Joyner Lucas video and everybody's like, nigga, look at this nigga. Mm. I'm like, yes. My bro is one of the best actors walking the earth while simultaneously he's one of the best male R&B artists walking the earth right now. This is just what it is. My boy is top five. Mm. And I have a pretty damn good argument to make that he's top five R&B guys right now. You know what I mean? Mm. Excluding the OGs, not the, you know what I mean? Not the, the monsters, monsters. I feel like there's not a lot of R&B coming out There's like that. there, there's artists, but he's a top five. Mm. And I want to start that argument, start that debate, and put him in those things. Because outside of CB, Brent, Bryson, that 4-5 is pretty open. I mean, who would it even be? But I feel like Ro Timmy hasn't been making no music to, to, to be on that list either, though. I think that that's a subjective statement. So what you're saying is that you're talking about making music that hits and mm. quality of music is two different things. So now that he's, we're building out the support and we're getting these rollouts and we're getting the press in order, I'm going to get Ro to come out onto your show and everything like that. And Ro could really start getting this go. But once these narratives start going out to where Ro's going and really go, yo, my nigga, real shit, he's a top five nigga. Now, I like his music. I think um, like he's one of the ones that I'll definitely listen to. And I mean, to be honest, this whole Afrobeat thing is just like, like it came and it took over a wave that just is, is I don't think it's going nowhere no time soon. It can't because you wonder why you don't want to buy Afro beats that feels good. Yeah, it feels good. And we haven't had a lot of feel good. We haven't had feel good music for Black culture in so long. In a long time that that it's like basically late two thousands R and B maybe because rap is so dark. Fuck bitches. Fuck niggas. Suck my dick. Suck my dick. And it's just look at all the girl rap now. Fuck niggas. Niggas ain't shit. It's dark, bro. Yeah. So now when you get a I love my life, you're my wife. You know, let's do it twice. But even the breakup songs, it's like, I was just saying this on my Instagram last night. I feel like it was a time where I could listen to breakup songs, and I ain't know nothing about love, but I love the song. Like, Not Gonna Cry by Mary J. Blige. It's like, that song just hit. Like, no matter if you happy or not, like, it's a great song. Mm -hmm. And even, like, I think about Burner Boy, Last Last. That's a breakup song. Mm -hmm. That song is one of the best. Like, it's so fire. It don't make you... It just is a vibe. So I think I the, the toughest thing for me with music when I talk about present music now is that I feel like people confuse success for quality. What you mean? And that's a bomb that I want. I think that the biggest issue in 2024 is people confuse the success of music for the quality of music. Oh, for sure. That's just but that's life though. That's but, life. And that's why I, 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 these are all part of the reasons why I shied away from a lot of dialogues. But you're not you. And this is the, this is for everybody out there. And this is, this is the, the sad truth. What makes you, you punch is your resume mm -hmm. because you've proven it. Mm -hmm. But guess what? You always could have been a good DJ. You always could have been a good host. You always could have been a good A&R. But what solidifies you as who you are is because of your track record, because you put numbers on the board. Mm -hmm. So I get it. It's a it's so many artists out there who are really good. Facts. But if you don't got the it factor that come with it, I'm sorry. I can't be. I, you can't be mad at me because 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 yeah. uh, sexy red is going crazy. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. I see y'all arguing you and Wayne. <laughs> so I'm just saying that's all. That's all I'm saying. I'm not. Yeah. But I understand that. But that's yeah. life. They say they don't. Is an old saying that they, that go up in the hood when you coming up. They don't support talent. They support who's popular. Okay, get popular. Then. Mm -hmm. You've proven that. 100. percent So how can you say that? Because no, I, I just I, I go I understand what a successful record is, and that's why with him specifically, I was like, "Yo, we're putting out a double album to overserve the fans. Mm. We're gonna make sure that there's so much music that they can choose from that they're like, I can never play with this man again. Mm. We're gonna put everything is on our dollar. We're independent, so we're spending our money to get onto to playlists, to get onto the Instagram, to get everything going. We're spending our dollars to market ourselves. We're spending our dollars to pay for half the beats on the shit, to clear everything, to get the writers. You get what I'm saying? I wrote majority of the album with him. 
I'm executive producer of the album. Hmm. Because at the end of the day, I was like, yo, bro, we going to keep this in-house and we're going to literally put this project out to where that people go, this is something insane. And this is what it is. I invite, I dare, I want people to listen. I don't go, nah, wait till it comes. I'll play you four, five, six records today. Hmm. And I promise you that you'll literally go, wrote to me as one of the best albums I've heard. I would love for I love to steal you for an hour after this and be like, here, here's here's four R and Bs and here's four Afro. Look, it's not regular, but I'm standing on it because I am somebody with a resume that I've I'm gone is I've took from zero to a hundred five six artists already. <laughs> mm. You know what I mean? From him, he's at a hundred and then started to go right back down. Now we got to pull it right back to a hundred again because he's already got mo he already has three hit records. You get what I'm saying by himself. You know, what to do, um, maybe even four. Love Somebody is Gold, What to Do About to Go Gold, um, In My Bed is Double Plat, uh, it's about to, it's, and, um, and Love Rhythm is about to go platinum. So these are all hit records. We do the shows, he sells out venues. This is real, but it's about narrative. So you're putting Road to Me Top 5 R&B? R&B right now. I just, who's 4-5? Right now. Right now, 2024. I mean, it's... It's R and B songs that's coming out. I can't say people, but it's R and B songs that's coming out that's like really doing numbers. Cool, I'm listening. Uh, shit, Coco Jones. Oh, that's the girls. Uh, male. I'm saying top five male. Okay. Yeah, top five. The girls are the girls are different. The girls, Scissor Her. There's a million of Scissor Her. Victoria Monet, Coco Jones, Summer Walker. Mm -hmm. That's the top five over there. Men. Top five male R and B. That's why I said Chris, Bryson, Brent. That's why I was going with that. Not the girls. The girls are on the other side. So you putting Rotimi over Black? At the present moment? I don't know if we put him over there, but he's in the top five. If I hear who you're for is, I might. Sheesh, over Black? Because I look at this and I go, there's R&B. And then when you look at this whole thing and I look and I go, when it comes down to his videos, he's going to be able to sell his videos indifferently. He's going to be able to do that. If we saw what he did with Jordan, what do you think he's going to do with his new project on his videos? It's amazing. I got two of the videos to show you right now. I need this. You about out. to you about to see this right now. You about to see it. It's Four million on the gram, a million on YouTube. The boy's something not to be played with. Who's making music right now, bro? Men. I don't the know. The fact that you have to search it shows that there's a gap. Huh? You get what I'm saying? Like that's a You put him over Don Tolliver? Don Tolliver's an RB. No? No. Don Tolliver is definitely RB. No, he does no. R and B? He's not an R and B artist. I I don't I don't think I think Don Tolliver. Let me tell you. I'm trying to find an argument. I'm trying to. I'm with you. Let me tell you. Want to know <laughs> something else that I want to get off to? Lucky Day. And I want to say Lucky Day is fire. But if what, what's Lucky Day's biggest record? I don't know. I'm okay, you don't know. But there's an in my bed. So there it is. Next guy. You get. That's what not I mean? true because I don't know. That's not fair. You brought him up, so I'm just defending how I'm defending. Shout to Lucky Day. He's dope. You get what I mean? So this is what my job is going to be. You get what I mean? We, you call our basketball player, I go, did he make the all-star season? Don't get mad at me. <laughs> so, but let me, let me bring up a point that I think is super valid, right? I know we got a lot of time on this, on this clock, but... This podcast, we good. Yeah. You know, when, when it looks at this shit, I go and I go, I don't like that they categorize Don Tolliver, A Boogie, Rowdy Rebel, Rowdy Rich, and they, and they cloud these guys as rappers. They're not rappers, and they're not R&B singers. And this is not a diss. I think that we should make a genre for the people who do that. Mm. Blue, Young Blue. Young Blue. They are not R&B artists. They are not rappers. Why is it that our genre of hip hop continues to underserve our own music? Mm. Why don't, like how there's a soft rock, hard rock, alternative rock, contemporary rock, and regular pop rock, why does that have so many sections and our genre doesn't? Why don't we put respect on our own genre? Mm. Why don't we have what that would be? I don't, I don't know, wave rap, whatever it becomes. I am not trying to name it. Mm. You get what I mean? Melody rap, however. But why don't we have one? Because calling A Boogie a rapper is unfair. If A Boogie puts out the record of his life and Kendrick puts out the record of his life, that they're in the same category. That's insulting like a, to both of them. Like a Tootsie. Like, yeah. This is yeah, not, yeah. they are not, This I could go on and on and on. I just yeah. named the guys who came straight to my head. Yeah. These guys are not rappers and they're not art and they're not R&B singers. And I hate that I'm an artist. Shut up. Everybody's a fucking artist. Everybody's an artist. Stop with the, the hierarchy where they be like, I'm an artist. Shut up. Mm. Everybody is an artist. The type of artist that you are should be, we should give them a genre though. 
and we should put respect on their talent. Don Todd, we need to respect it and give them a genre. They should not only get a genre, they should get a billboard chart. They should not only get a billboard chart, they should get a Grammy category. And all the other award shows should follow. Because we are doing a disservice to both sides of the art. For the Don Tolliver that's in the rap, he's hurting the rappers, and he might lose because someone might have went off on rap time. Mm. Like, all of those artists, they're all going to lose. They're going to give Kendrick, not like us, the damn rap record of the year. It's done. Pack it up already. You get what I mean? It's going to happen. The Grammy board loves him. So everybody that does harmony, melodic rap is done. Pack it up. Why? They should have their own category. The same way that Grammy's just in, just, just, just initiated that there's an Afrobeat category, they need to do, we need to name this genre and we need to implement it immediately and start putting more respect on our genre. And these are the shits that I want clipped up because mm. this is the gold. This is the real, like this is the gold where it goes, why don't we respect our genre if rock can have five different subgenres where they all get Grammy noms and they all get charts and they all get, why is it that this is not, why is, why is R Roddy Rich having to compete with the same exact chart as Meek Mill? Mm. It's insane. I never, I never even thought about that. No one does because we don't put enough respect on our genre. Mm. You want to know what else should happen? And I'm going to be the first ones to really say this. There should be an adult hip hop. So what would be the kid hip hop? Just give me two different. Not artists. kid, just an adult hip hop and regular hip hop. If Jay Z drops tomorrow, Jay Z should not be competing with Ice Spice. I like that's hard. Why is Nas on the same chart as Three One Zero Baby? Three One Zero Baby graduated high school yesterday. It was on the internet, left, right, baby, let's do it. Yeah. How the fuck is he on the same chart that if Too Short dropped tomorrow, Too Short has to compete with a kid who just finished chemistry homework? Mm. There need to be an adult hip hop. And that's the problem. You want to get really deep right now? Yo, bro, I beg of you, clip this up. Like, for real. That's a part of the flex problem. You want to know why Flex was going at me? It's because he was scared of his spot. Mm -hmm. He's scared of his spot because he's like, there's a nigga running so fast, he's going to take my spot. But the problem is, is that Flex goes, there's one spot. There shouldn't be. He's an icon. He should have graduated. But where does he graduate to? Why can't Noriega drop a new song? Why can't Snoop Dogg drop a new song? Why can't Jay-Z, Nas, Styles P, why can't they drop new songs? Because they don't want to be competing with these kids and putting out an album and be like, um, Sheik Looch does this amount. It's not fair. They're not even aiming for the same demographic. But in, in all fairness, you are right. I love this. I love this. But we are seeing people like Killer Mike have like be in positions where you can win you're Killer older. Mike won at the Grammys Killer Mike did not win to the masses his records are nowhere the people are not playing it they're not in the club they're not getting embraced by the younger demographic Killer Mike's record got highlighted by the music curators of what the Grammy board is which is all salute to Killer Mike but that's like the highest form of recognition when it comes to music right I mean, to an extent, I don't want to just put Grammys as the almighty over our culture. But yes, it's one of the highest forms of acknowledgement. But the problem is, is that Killer Mike, when he won it, it they made it so much about age. You shouldn't give up. You shouldn't do this. Why? He should not be competing with this. Mm. So it's He amazing. should be with his peers. That says more about Killer Mike, I guess. I mean, you're sure. It's an okay. amazing project. Nothing is wrong okay. with the project. No, I'm saying the like him him winning says more about him than it, it does of the industry not having this. Yeah, and people separate, love Killer Mike. He's yeah. been advocating for it. You promo, you do a lot of things to get a great award. He shouldn't award. be competing you in that it. anyway. No, he shouldn't at all. Mm. Like, if I'm telling you, I just want this to just be clear as day. If if Scarface dropped tomorrow, Bun B decided to put out a record tomorrow with E40. I do not think in any shape or form that he should be on the same chart as 4-1 mm. <laughs> or Cash Cobain. Mm. It's insanity. We're the only people that treat our genre like this. Mm. There should be an adult hip-hop. It's funny Havoc, because they have... Noriega, 
all of them should just be working. You know what I mean? Everybody should I like be that. dumping. It should. Because they have the, uh, even, I mean, we see that on a small level when it comes to radio. Because we have the regular, uh, like if it's just talking about Radio 1, right? We have the, the, the smaller, the radio stations that's local and terrestrial. But then you have the parent company of that, like the Magic. And I think Magic is all around the world, right? You'll have, a, for example, from Baltimore, we got 92Q. But then we got Magic 95.5, where it's all the older music. But that's the problem. You see what you're saying there is that that's that's actually what I'm not in love with. No, because that's playing the older music. I don't need it to play the older music. I need it to also be a space to where the older artists can put out new music as well. It's well, not I guess just it's the older demographic. No, it's exactly what you said. There are channels that play the older music. Mm. I don't just want a channel that plays older music. It should be new music. I want from, my older from an older demographic who loves it all. Okay. Who would not mind hearing a brand new um, Trick Daddy song. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Who might not mind to hear a brand new Juvenile song. Okay. Juvenile shouldn't have to be coming up with a new dance to try to get it to be viral because he has to compete. In theory, if Juvenile comes out with a new song, he immediately is competing with Rob49 and New Orleans for radio spots. It's insane. Damn, that makes sense. Nah. So there are so many of our older heads that get forced out and get into bad financial positions because they can't continue to survive because they can't continue to make money. If they were allowed a space where they're not competing with the younger demographic, then people can allow them to operate and put out music. Mm. We are underserving our genre. Someone needs to speak about it. I want to talk. I want to go on to Charlemagne. Oh, I'm back. I'm back. I want to talk about this. I want to push against the people that's going to push. I want to go to Billboard and go, why isn't this a thing? I want to go because it's like, who? We don't have a president of hip hop. Someone has to start the dialogue. Someone has to be able to articulate at a high enough level. And someone has to attack the machine and go, Billboard, how do we get this to go through? Is it a certain amount of votes? Is there a panel? Is there something? How do we invent what we're going to call this new genre of music? And an artist, please don't be difficult and be like, I don't want to be the, like, accept that you are this Hybrid. Maybe this hybrid hip hop. Mm. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's R and B and rap, and now we call it hybrid. Why? I mean, you don't I mean the Ro Timmy is relatively young. Why? Like, why do you care so much? It's not about Ro. I'm just curious. Like, just, why, why? Why is this so such a passionate point for you? I mean, I love rap. I came up on the culture. I really identify with what it is, and I hate. I hate that an artist that I, like I love Fabulous. I love Pusha T. Right. I love them. I promise you, Fab doesn't put out an album, and it's no knock to Fab, because I've said a million names, please, before anybody clips this up and try to make it seem like I'm doing certain shit, Fab, push it to any rapper, insert any older rapper. They are not dropping because they don't want to look crazy being compared to the younger people, mm -hmm. because they're going to be compared to their sales, they're going to be compared to their streams, and they cannot compete. It's not fair. If I am a fan of Fabulous, Fabulous came out in 1998 rapping live on the air on DJ Clue with Noriega in a freestyle battle. That's the first time we heard of Fabulous Sport. I am a hip-hop connoisseur for my generation. All the old heads, all the OGs, the reason why they like when I talk is because they know I know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not talking on my ass. The reality is, is that Fab and all of these guys, the Pusha T's, the, just the, the rappers who rap, rap. They have to double and triple and quadruple think, do I want to put this out and not chart? Mm. But why are they trying to chart here? If there was an adult hip hop, I'd bet my life that we would have 40 albums from OG rappers that were like, I've been sitting on this music, I want to put it out. Damn. Because they have thoughts. What do you just quit? Rap isn't basketball. You don't get bad knees. <laughs> mm. Your mind still works. Four, four, four. Jay Z's album, the, the mature album. That album did not I love sell. That. I, I just was talking about that. I, that's one of my favorite projects. That's okay. The album didn't sell. Yeah. It didn't do good, but it only did good because that's a comparative situation. Mm. What if that came out in adult hip hop and that was the number one record in adult hip hop, the number one album? So Jay Z had number one album and highest selling album for his genre. Mm. It's a different game, right? It doesn't look like one of his weaker, less successful projects. It looks like his most, because they're like, nigga, 444 is talking to people about money, investing, stop doing nigga activities, mm -hmm. stop worrying about what the fuck you see on the internet, Take and start worrying about real motherfucking life. Mm -hmm. Who gives a shit about that that is under 30 years old? An extremely small minority of people. Mm. 
He's not talking to them. So if he's not talking to them, why are we trying to make his stats of this album be compared against it? Damn. That's real. I wanna, I'm fiending. I would love, when I tell you, I would love to talk to a large publication. I would love for them to put me, but who am I talking against? So we have to understand that second why. Why do I say this? Because we want more. But why? It's like we don't know who we're going against. Who am I talking to? Am I talking to the labels? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know who would have to start this dialogue on a serious level. That's why I say it on these pods, so that people can clip it and now go, here Shade Room, here Neighborhood Talk, here Academics, put this up, let's start the conversation so that we can get legs under it. Mm. And really go, now someone, who got to answer this? Punch asking a question for us. You get what I'm saying? Like, let's not be decisive in the comments. Let's not just try to be, you know what I mean, the devil's advocate just to be difficult. Let's stand up for something for a moment and go, yo, Grammy aboard. Punch talking for us real quick. Can you answer him? Because we want to know. That's a good idea. Roddy Rich is not a rapper, nor is he an R&B singer, and we want him to still be as a top 10 artist. Why is he not? Hmm. Maybe because he's competing with half the rappers. And then when you're competing with these charts, what do you start doing? What is an artist, if everything turns into singing, what you do artists do start doing? Start emulating. Yeah. What do you do? You lose your core. You start changing your art form for what? Because you're trying to stay alive in a game. Relevant, so if yeah. we made those genres have more air and more consistency to where that they can stand on its own, artists would stay closer to the artistry and we would get better music on a consistent basis. Hmm. This would fix our entire genre of music if they split those two parts they gave us the something for the singing r&b rappers and they gave us an adult hip-hop we would literally survive 20 30 more years mm. as a genre damn this is fire this is deep bro like this is i never even thought i didn't even think about i'm with that. you i'm with you where do we go from here I don't know, man. Now, next time, one of these days, we got to get me, you, and Wayno to argue about it. Fact. He going to co-sign it, though. He has yeah, I don't, I don't see him... He understands it. Arguing that. Wayno's of my generation. We're the same shit. Of being like, been around it, been on ground level with some shit, have seen some shit and seen it, and I got a lot of love for him and everything. And I, can, just I can get that conversation started. Yeah. We can get that easy. It'll that would be fire. And it'll just be crazy. And it's just... It's, it's a real thing. I'm Our problem is we don't it. put enough respect... <laughs> We don't put enough respect on our culture. Mm. If there's a message today, we don't put enough respect on our culture. This is good, bro. I appreciate you, brother. For the people that don't know, they do. But let them know how to follow you and all that, man. I mean, uh, PVNCH. Once you start typing, it's going to pop up. Um, I'm on all of the platforms, everything. I mean, my goal of everything is just let's get the conversation started with the big homies. Mm. I want to be a voice of the culture again. I once was. And I want to be back. I think my culture is being underserved and under undernurtured, and there's very few people in my generation that can articulate it at a high enough level to have enough heart to go against it, to have enough money to compete and play around. If they try to pressure you out, you get what I'm saying, and do all of this and really run at the machine the same way I've done it before, I can do it again. Mm. You know what I mean? And it's time. It's time, it's time, it's time. Our genre got to be taken a lot more serious. Our life got to be taken more serious. If there's any young kids listening to this, stay out the streets. Trust me, it ain't really that cute. Free all my guys. RIP to all my people. Like, for real, for real, for real. RIP a lot. RIP Pop Smoke. RIP Nipsey. RIP T Dot. Like, a lot of the guys. Like, it's a lot of dark, dark, dark shit. RIP S Dot. It's so much bad. It goes bad. Free a lot of my friends. Just this culture is rough. And you got to really, really know where you want to play in it. Got to really, really understand that I'm one of the lucky ones to live the way that I can. And, um, you know, I showcase it and I'm giving the information as my payback. That's how I could pay God back by sharing the information. Jay Hill is somebody in this culture that has literally been like, I'm going to be here. Mm -hmm. And it's continuing to push. And he's went viral a couple of times. And that annoys me because it's like, oh, look, he went viral. That's just cool shit. It's half of the interviews that don't go viral are some of your um, most dopest. And the shit that goes viral is luck of the fucking dice. But, yeah. So I just say to everything, it's like, I wish a big brand will understand that there needs to be louder voices. Mm. There's nothing that you can do. 
You can't go harder. You're hitting up everybody. You can't be here. We're in this whole studio that he got right here. It's all owned by him. This is where it's at right now. When you look at this, you look at, this is somebody that's lit. But when you look at that, it's like, what's next? Mm. We need a big homie to come and say, yo, bro, here's this bag. Here's this play. Keep talking. And now here's some funding, you know? Mm. And I know what that feels like when a big homie come in with a check. And I'd love that to happen with you and everything. And I'm back, man. So it's just fun games. Man. Welcome back, bro. It's here, man. They about to start seeing you Yeah, everywhere. I'm about to start saying a lot of shit, man. <laughs> this is fire, bro. <laughs> it's lit. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. Punch, man. This is a wrap. We out.